like to drive now. Chile, the Atacama Desert, one of the most remote corners of our planet. Dry, lifeless, unforgiving. It's crunch time for our title contenders under desert skies. RXR lead the charge. Those chasing must respond. They must outperform, outrace, outscore. History will play its part. Pressure will be heavy, but they all have the same challenge. They must all beat the track to beat each other. The title fight is now. Hello and welcome to the stunning Atacama Desert in Chile for round four of the 2022 Extreme E Championship. It's the first time the event comes to South America. Its excitement is growing ahead of the penultimate X Prix of the season. I'm Andrew Coley. Myself and Jenny Gow will be in the commentary box all weekend to guide you through the proceedings. Yes, hello. Um, this is the Antofagasta Copper X Prix taking place, as you can see, in the driest place on Earth. But actually, a lot of the drivers saying it reminds them of that very first race we had this year back in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, Saudi Arabia, very dry. Not not as dry as at the Atacama Desert, believe it or not. Now, you wouldn't have thought it, would you, looking at the uh, the sand on which, of course, RXR threw down the gauntlet last year's champions uh, with a driver change. Michaela Arlen Kotlinski alongside Johan Christofsson this season. Absolutely brilliant. And their dominance continued in Italy, but with a bit of a twist. Yeah, they took a penalty, actually, which meant they didn't get the win. They were relegated to fifth place. So it was a win for Chip Ganassi Racing. They'll be looking to try and compete and claw back the space to RXR. But in Italy, they managed to get back to winning ways, didn't they, in the second race for RXR. So who will win here in Chile? Look, a population of 19 million people and the region, the very dry Antofagasta. Yeah, this is a very different track. Super short, couple of laps for each of the drivers. Going to be brilliant to see how it goes down. And then, of course, Uruguay at the end of the year. Will the championship go there or will it be settled here at round four? If you've missed any of the action so far, let's take a look back. The title is on the line in Chile and our season so far has been full of drama. Season two began in the otherworldly landscape of Saudi Arabia. In the final, a huge collision between Neon McLaren and RXR brought out the red flag. Despite having damage, when the racing restarted, RXR hunted down their rivals and took the first win of the season. The next stop on our electric odyssey saw an adrenaline-fueled double header on the stunning island of Sardinia. RXR ended X44's unbeaten qualifying record as they continued their dominant streak en route to the five-car final. Off the start, it was RXR and Axiona Sainz who got the advantage. Christopherson went right, Sainz went left. And when the racing lines came together, chaos ensued. Oh, contact! Massive shot! Massive shot! I think that's Christopherson into Sainz! Rosberg X Racing crossed the finish line first, but their collision saw them receive a post-race penalty, handing Chip Ganassi Racing their maiden extremely victory. Round three in Sardinia saw RXR battling back with an impeccable racing performance. And in the final, it was a daring dive into the water by Michaela Arlen Kosolinski that saw RXR take the lead and a well-deserved victory. With a 32-point advantage in the championship standings and with a maximum of 30 points up for grabs at an X Prix, can the chasing pack close the gap? Or will RXR leave Chile as back-to-back -back Extreme E champions? In Extreme E, anything can happen. So we need to stay on our toes, we need to stay focused, keep doing what we've been doing so far, just trying to do the very best that we can and prepare as well as we can. For me, it would mean just so much to win this championship. I just, you know, I get butterflies now just talking about it. It would be simply amazing. 
the closest rivals behind us in the championship is uh, X44, Chip Ganassi Racing and Axiona Science. Of course we feel the pressure, I mean leading the championship, we will try to do our absolute best and focus on ourselves. But at the same time, you know, it's uh, high pressure on the teams behind us because they are the ones that have to catch us. So let's take a look at those championship standings then. We've seen already it's, it's a 32-point lead coming here. They need to leave with 31, Jenny. It all depends, doesn't it, who wins here as well because it can go on count back if you end the season equal on points. So Chip Ganassi Racing need that win and they need that gap to come down. But I think they actually need the, the assistance of Actiona Science and X44 Vida Carbon as well if they're going to get this done. Yeah, it's a really tight pack, isn't it? Just separated by two points. And then if you shuffle down both x -Site and Andretti United on 27 points, so plenty to play for. And I think, as you say, collaborations may be out there. Yeah, so about whether or not more teams can push RXR down. Laura Winter has been in the paddock having a catch up with the drivers ahead of this round four. Well, coming to GDP is great because uh, if you know that this special place is the Atacama Desert and it's the driest place on Earth, um, to have an impact with such an area um, with racing, with all the ideas Extreme E has, is an uh, incredible feeling and um, it's good to be here and uh, I just can't wait to, to hit the track. Super excited to be here in Chile. It looks like we're on Mars to say the least and the track looks absolutely amazing. It's something completely different than we've ever raced on. So yeah, I'm ready just to get out there, do some laps, get this show on the road. I feel great. It's a nice place. I mean, we would never get to this place if it wouldn't be for Extreme E. We got to see the mine yesterday, so that was nice. Just on the track walk, track looks really dynamic and wide, fast flowing. Uh, a lot of different opportunities of lines and things which you can use in terms of racing car to car. So I think it would be a very fun weekend. Really excited to be here and happy to be here and race in this really remote place. And that was really my first reaction. It's so remote, nothing is close. Whenever, wherever you're looking here, nothing is close by. Um, so it's super remote, but that, that's what this, you know, extreme racing series is all about, to take the tracks to remote places. The track has got a bit of everything, really. It's very smooth, so I think smoothness from your driving technique is going to be really important, not to be scrubbing too much speed by, you know, trying to throw it around too much. A lot of blind corner with little uh, kick or uh, where you will lose a bit the, the contact with the ground in the middle of the corner, so you have to anticipate a bit. And it's quite technical and fast at the same time, so it will not be an easy one. It's a really long weekend, anything can happen, and I think on a super fast track like this, um, the limit of push is going to be absolute maximum. And I, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to kind of watch how the final plays out, so I don't think anything will be left. We will see, I think, great action out there, and with those speeds we will reach, you know, it will be very fun to, to send it in there and uh, try to battle it out, you know, uh, especially with more cars close by. And as it's a short track as well, I think you know, we will see cars, you know, being just a few times difference, and hopefully, you know, we can battle it out all the way through to the to the final. I'm expecting a pretty packed field in terms of lap times. That means tight racing, and uh, in the end, it will be like elbows out and all in. Yes, it will, and that's what we love about Extreme. Now, a reminder, it's two laps for each driver around this rather short but perfectly formed course, Andrew Coley. Yeah, interesting what Timo said, wasn't it, about elbows out. If you look at the slingshot there as we helicopter over on this first run around, we've got a series of corners after a relatively short start. That's something we haven't had before, Jenny. It's normally a long blast to a tight corner and they get in a line. I think we'll see them racing through that whole slingshot section. Yeah, this is what you've been dreaming of, isn't it? This is it like is. your design. Copper corner corner is where they come round to either take the switch zone, the finish line, through that finish, which is actually a jump in itself, which looks spectacular. Yeah, it's a big jump, and that one's flat out. Now, Sebastian Loeb, you'll have seen just a few moments ago, he said about there's several points on the course where the car leaves the ground, and you saw footage of, of just coming into the corners, making sure you're not getting too deep. It, it is technical, it is fast. Katie Munning said it's about momentum. They're all bang on. Traction challenge as well. Is for, I think you'll see people using the hyperdrive in there a little bit to try and get the advantage. I think it's going to be crucial as well with five points on offer. That's a lot of points and it could decide the championship this weekend. Only RXR have won that so far this year. The other teams have got to stop them winning it here.
it's time for qualifying one and just look the lunar surroundings that are the wonderful Chilean Antofagasta Copper X Pre. We are ready for the first challenge. First up, well, let us show you what's about to happen. Yeah, we've had three cars out on course already. First up was Neon McLaren Extreme E. Emma Gilmore taking the wheel ahead of Tanner Faust. You can see the course has been wetted, just so you know, it's been wetted with seawater, which is what the local mine uses to uh, try and keep uh, the environmentally friendly aspect to what they do. We'll be telling you more about that during the course of the weekend, but they've used the same pipeline to get that seawater here, so it doesn't have any effect on, on the, the very little water that there is in this region. Yeah, into the switch zone, you can hear them say, go, so out Emma gets, and Tanner will get into the car. Emma had a puncture yesterday in one of her free practice sessions, so she actually missed a lap. Her split times were good until then, and both her and Tanner Faust were absolutely flying this morning in Q1. It was a great run by them. There's uh, that big bank bend. There's a few rocks about there. These are some of the sections we expect might cut up a little bit as well. So we'll see if it remains as smooth as the drivers were saying. Look at the speed you're carrying. Here's that big jump over the finish. Watch this. Here we go. It's like a long jump. It's absolutely beautiful. Majestic as that neon McLaren flies through the air at the hands of Tanner Faust. The American hoping for a much better weekend this time. They've only got 19 points for the season, so they need to claw some back. Just look at this. Coming round to the finish, taking it really hard. Two rolls in three events. Remember, Tanner had a roll, didn't he, in Saudi Arabia. Emma Gilmore had one in Sardinia. They need a little bit of a change of luck, but I think the pace is there this weekend, and it was certainly a great start to qualifying for them. Ahead of Excite Racing coming up onto the line. Yeah, Tamara Molinaro and Timo Scheider getting their first podium last time out. It was a bit of a surprise. Using hyperdrive there already for Molinaro. They've got matching tattoos this weekend, which is really nice. A bond, clearly, that's seen them go from championship drivers up to the Excite Energy Racing Team. Yeah, they had a little bet, didn't they? And if they ended up on the podium, they'd get a tattoo. And then they ended up on the podium and had to get the tattoo. So, uh, yeah, good for them. Nicely done. Uh, Tamara coming in for the changeover. You can see she was just 1.8 seconds down at this point. So, very competitive between Neil McLaren Extreme and Excite Energy Racing as Timo Scheider got in to take over for his stint. Timo not having uh, the same influence on the track this weekend. If people are wondering, they brought in another driver to design the track so that he wouldn't have what some of the teams might have perceived as an advantage. Yeah, they were saying, oh, it's no advantage, but actually for the clarity, I think, of the championship, it's yeah. good that he's just out there now. He's just a, another driver yeah. in this brilliant lineup. Yeah, good job by him. They came into the end of their run uh, just a few seconds off the pace, basically. This was with one lap to go over that jump. The finish line jump is uh, is easy, it's flat out, but it's the one down at the back side which uh, caught out your decline Schmidt yesterday. There's the finish line jump, look at that, it just lands beautifully like butter. Is there a secret to jumping well in a car? Depends on the jump, and that's the key, and we're going to see that through this session, so we'll talk people through the techniques and uh, what you have to do. In fact, we might be able to talk you through it now, because Joran Christofsson on his run, when he took over on the second half, we'll see it in a moment, he had a little moment on the second lap when he was having a very big push, but it was his teammate, Michaela Arlen kotlinski was up first. She was so, so good last time out. You can see the pools of water just before that jump, and actually, Michaela picking her line really carefully. They've obviously spoken about it and worked out what they want to do when it comes to this challenge so just going through the middle of that you want your steering nice and straight so you land straight don't take any bend into it absolutely and you could see at the end of the first lap she was 3.3 seconds up this is about three quarters of the way around this is where a lot of people have been using hyperdrive on the run up to ridge line because that's very steep and you want to carry the extra pace up there it's within the continental traction challenge so use your hyperdrive and boost it up the hill look at this 7.72 seconds ahead as she handed over to teammate Christopherson. Yeah, she's really, I think, come on in leaps and bounds this season. And whatever the relationship is between her and Christopherson, when it comes to studying the tracks and working out how to do it, it really works for them both. So it's fascinating to watch. It is indeed. So she was some seven seconds quicker than uh, the two female drivers had gone before. Interestingly, the teams have nearly all gone with the same tactic here of nominating the female driver first. Only JBXE have nominated Kevin Hansen, who you'll see running seventh on the road to take the wheel first of all. Christophson on the second lap. We're not going to see the moment he had down at the jump. Uh, but yeah, big, big push. He took another three seconds. They ended 10.8 seconds quickest. And at the uh, moment, they are fastest in Q1. 
Well, last year's Arctic X Prix saw the world's first international motorsport event take place in the Arctic Circle. The drivers raced wheel to wheel at the base of the world's second biggest ice sheet, which covers 80% of Greenland. Yeah, you're seeing uh, footage here from several of our different legacy projects from around the world last year. But we're talking about Greenland, and last month, JBXC's Kevin Hansen and Hedda Hozas went back up to the Arctic Circle to take a look and see how things had gone. Last year, Extreme E set up a series of legacy projects at the local school in the small town of Kangalusak. The projects included the installation of solar panels outside of the school gates, as well as helping implement climate into the curriculum in Greenlandic, so it was accessible to all. Hello kids, it's nice to see you. And we've been looking forward to this day, haven't we? This year, the drivers, along with Professor Richard Washington, who is part of Extreme's scientific committee, returned to the school to join in with the activities and help find creative ways to bring climate education to life. The big task today is to drive the electric go-kart out on the track, but firstly, we wanted to them to, to interact with sustainability and teamwork. So today we are going around in groups at different stations to see the kids, the next generation, working on these topics and, and really putting a lot of school time to that with the teachers. I think that's a great thing. Good job. One other aspect of their legacy project last year saw the presenting of electric go-karts to the school in collaboration with the Danish Automobile Sports Federation. The drivers spent the rest of the day giving the students pointers as they made their way around the track. The reason that, that, that we come to places like Greenland is all about legacy. So we're using sport for good and it's the catalyst of change. And so each of the locations has a legacy project which actually works with the local community. Here we are in the middle of Greenland and it's about e-mobility and it's about renewable energy. And the power of having a female driver, young girls are looking up to Hedda and actually understanding that they too could be a driver in the future. And we're in the middle of nowhere here um, in the Arctic Circle and we've got kids that have an aspiration to be sports stars and why shouldn't they? It's, um, it, it's one of the parts of the job that makes me and, and our team feel very, very good about being here. I'm really grateful to, to be here in, in Greenland and this is an amazing championship that is, that is not only focusing on sports, uh, it's focusing on, on the bigger picture and what is actually important in the world. The trip itself was something I will, will bring with me for the rest of my life. It's great to be a part of this championship that you got this opportunity to travel to these places like this one in Greenland. It's an incredible experience and a memory for life. Attention all teams, this is race control. Stand by for the start of the Copper X Prix. Qualifying round one is about to commence. Energize your systems and prepare to race. And that's Sir Alatia wandering through the back of the command center there and just giving Timmy Hansen a little fist pump. Timmy waiting for his teammate Katie Munnings to take the start. And then, of course, after that, NASA's new teammate, Clara Anderson. So Clara Anderson in for Yuta Kleinschmidt after Yuta was injured yesterday during free practice. Katie Munnings was flying during free practice yesterday. Very impressive indeed. Jenny, this is one of the teams that we've been last year with Chip United feel like they're I don't know, just got a bit a bit of a run of bad luck. There's a few teams you think that should have more points yes. than they do, and this is definitely one of them alongside Veloce, McLaren and, and the App Cooper team who are coming up next as well. So let's see if the luck can turn around, because it seems like Chip Ganassi finally got there last time with the win, so maybe it's somebody else's turn to get just that little bit more luck. But Munning certainly proving that she's very comfortable in that number 23 car now. She's at one with the Genesis Andretti United and her and Timmy Hansen making a great pairing. If they can just get the car safely back. That was Katie that was saying, if you remember, about needing momentum, but that's a, a great example of it. You come down off the ridge line onto this long straight at the back. That's a bit 
second down. That's not going to be the course for long run. But again, through here, look, little steering inputs, not too much, and carry the speed through the corner. Yeah, these cars are quick, but everybody has the same equipment, and this is quite a fast-flowing course in places, technical in others, but it's, you need to carry that momentum. All the drivers are saying it's very different from anywhere we've been before. We've had vast expanses, Jenny, haven't we, that we've blasted across, and now we've got a, a very a twisty course. Katie's some five, six seconds down there, so I wonder if it's surely not an issue already for them, or is she just having a cautious start? I hope it's not an issue. The car doesn't look to be going at full tilt, because you can actually throw it around this track pretty well. There aren't too many hazards waiting for you. It's a wide course. So I just wonder if there's a slight issue for her. She's losing time again, so eight seconds down now. We are, of course, comparing it to uh, championship leader Michaela Arlen Kotlinski at the minute, who was particularly quick. So, you know, if we compare that to uh, Emma Gilmore and Tamara Molinaro, it would be a, a, a closer time. But that, you know, that's a sign of the dominance of uh, RXR Rosberg X Racing. But Mullings was quick yesterday. That's her outlap. This is the other thing you see, Jenny, is they're going to learn this circuit more than they've learned other ones. And it's the first time, really, we shouldn't refer to it as a circuit. It's a course. But you can see when it only takes two minutes to go around it, the drivers start to look for tents in every corner instead of, oh, you know, there's a bit here and a bit there. You, you're, you're hunting for those tents everywhere. Let's have a look how Katie deals with this slingshot because I've seen plenty of different lines. If you are into your Formula 1, it's a little bit like Zandvoort. You can take the high road, which Katie's doing just there, slingshot your way around. You can take the low road as well. I've seen that done across the course of free practice. But now, there we go, seems to be a little happier in this section, catching. Yeah, catching at the bottom through a few of the waypoints there. We have a, a little waypoint. We'll give you an update on the timing at the bottom. So catching, if it's green, means they're catching that the quicker times. Up over the top of the crest, carry the speed down here, and then the long straight afterwards. So just a reminder, the Continental Traction Challenge, those are the double flags coming up on the horizon that you can see. Waypoint 9 is the start of that. So at this point, you want to go as fast as you can because your aggregate across the weekend, your best times here, can lead to an extra five points if you and your teammate are the fastest. So you can see that corner was off camber over a crest. This one through a dip. Now watch on the exit. She may well use the hyperdrive here, but that's what we're seeing the teams do. Katie, I don't think it's going to do this time. And that's to carry a bit of extra pace up the hill. So you know a hyperdrive gives you four seconds of extra power. Uh, and that's where most of the teams, certainly this morning, have, have shown their hand, is just to have a little boost of grunt up the hill where you need it. This is the jump that you declined Schmidt got wrong. Katie flies it nicely. Yeah, and at the end of the Continental Traction Challenge as well. So good marker points as she comes around, swings the car in. Timmy Hansen will be, now be waiting for her. The switch zone beckons down to 30 kilometers an hour when they reach there. They have to press a button which automatically slows the car to that limit. They had a few technical hiccups last time out, but you should press the button, slow the car and get ready. It's the Munnings Mumble uh, to switch over and give it to Hansen. Katie's not on the pace I expect her to be on there, so something hasn't gone quite right for me, Jenny. 17.5 is a little further away than I would have expected Katie to be, particularly after yesterday's free practice session when they were right up there. Uh, talking about free practice, if you missed it, you can go and find the Shakedown show online, uh, and that will give you an idea of what happened with Jutta Kleinschmidt. Sending our best to her for a recovery. She's been replaced this weekend, as we said, by Clara Anderson, who you'll see uh, in the very next car, actually, with Nasser Alatia. But Jutta was in good spirits when she got out the car. Just trying to have a listen in on what they're saying. Me. I don't know why. Okay. What right. did she say there? Turn the power back on, Timmy, before doing your belt. Power on. Right, yeah. Timmy, it seems to be after big jumps. It's still hitting the bump stop and then the steering goes. Right, so there we go. That answers our question yeah. straight away. So they're doing a reset on the car. Timmy needs to get right. his harness over his hands device. Go so out, Timmy's, Timmy's harness is not over his hands device. He'd be penalised for that if he doesn't get it up on top. He's realised and he's put back on the top there. They have to be fully safe. That, that door net has to be in. And Katie's saying that after the big jumps, the big impacts, they're having a problem with the steering. So he's done the reset. They don't lose any time in the switch zone. There's a minimum amount of time they have to spend in there. They've managed that pretty well. So let's wait and find out what, what happened with Katie Mullings. Here she is. Katie, cutting a slightly frustrated figure here, and we heard you in the switch zone there saying a few things. Is there an issue with the car? Uh, yeah, just power kind of steering um, from uh, yeah quite early on in the track. It's just I don't know. I think I think it should be okay for Timmy now. We've been able to reset it, but it was quite intermittent, so uh, hard to push in these conditions. How much pace do you think you lost? 
Oh yeah, I mean, like, I couldn't, I couldn't commit to anything because half the fruit was cutting, and I, you know, I couldn't cut it. So it's, it's a shame for us on quality, but you know, it's still early in the weekend, and everything counts for the semi. So we'll keep positive, and hopefully, Timmy can just get a good feeling now. We may have been able to reset the car, so hopefully, you should have a good lap. Hard work this morning. Thanks, Katie. Yeah, just didn't look like the normal Katie Munning style around it. A little bit more timid than I would have expected. And as she said, a power issue for them. Now, resetting the car does take a moment. But in that switch zone, they're kind of safe because they have to stay there for 45 seconds anyway. And it certainly looks like Hansen's going at full power now. Yeah, it does. So it's the steering she was referring to. What she was saying is, I can't catch it. So you, you have to understand, in your road car, drive your road car, you know when you stall the engine, the power steering stops, or if someone's pushing you along and the, and the power steering's not on, how heavy it is. Now, times that by about 10 because these cars have got a quick rack in meaning that the steering you don't have to turn as much to make the steering turn more that's what you have in race cars rally cars also that the continental wheels and tires of course they're huge so there's more momentum in those so now if you get the car sideways suddenly you've got a tall car with a lot of momentum a lot of weight in it if you can't react immediately with the steering you can't catch it and that's what katie's saying so when laura said how much time have you lost i couldn't commit to anything because she can't make those fine adjustments jenny and if we watch timmy you'll see tons them in every corner. Yeah, it's so marginal, isn't it? At every corner, every moment on this course. So around he goes, anyway, for his second lap. Over this big jump at the finish. Well, they'll do two laps each. So still plenty of time to be made up here. Down at the moment by almost 18 seconds. So plenty of time to be found, as we said. Uh, and remember, this is only the first part of qualifying. We go qualifying again later on. I think what's, in, what's important here, Jenny, is, is the fact that he isn't losing any more time. So yeah, it, he's, we're comparing him now to the second laps which was Faust, Christophers and Scheider so far. Christophers in the pace set, he was about three seconds quicker than Faust was. Uh, Timmy is only losing a, a couple of seconds to them which is which is nothing basically. So yeah hopefully back up. If it continues to go the wrong way then I'd say he's got the same problem but it's a shame for Katie isn't it? It really is. Yeah, unfortunate, but as we said, another chance to go again later on today, and we will see, because it's an accumulation of points across today that lead you into tomorrow. You really want to avoid the crazy race. That's the key for tomorrow's action. So just get yourself into a semi-final rather than the crazy, and you stand a better chance of getting into the final. Yeah, your odds are much better, aren't they? There is Katie, super disappointed. They've got the lighting right, haven't they, in the Vodafone Business Command Centre? It's, it's blue. Genesis colours, yeah, it's, it's, it's done, them, done them proud, hasn't it? Um, I wonder, so this is the section, I say, where we thought Katie might use a hybrid drive, but again, Jenny, you don't want a boost of extra power when you're already struggling to hang on to the car, so that's where we've seen a lot of the teams using it, is on that run up the hill for that little bit more momentum. 20 seconds down now, so just a couple of seconds lost. Just to add to the misfortune, they've got a 46 second time penalty for speeding in the switch zone area as well for car number 23. So more problems to add to their day, which isn't going great. We said they needed good luck. 46 is huge. I'm trying to remember because it's based, isn't it, on how quick you were going in the switch zone. We'll, we'll check after the, after the session, see exactly what it was. Oh dear. Okay, well there we go. Not the best start for Genesis and Greta United. They slot into P4. Some 21 seconds off, but as Jenny has just told you, they're also due a 46 second time penalty, and unfortunately, it's going to see him at the bottom of the timesheet. Timmy Hansen puffing his cheeks out there as well. I reckon he might have had the same issue. There it is, Jenny. A minute and seven off with the penalty applied. Yeah, the hand steering went for Timmy as well. He's done well there, hasn't he? Not to lose more time. He's done really well then if he had the same issue. Yeah, you can hear power steering is all we heard. That's enough. Thumbs up. You're right, Katie. Go again in the next session. Tough workout for them, eh? We haven't had steering issues either for a while now. You know, the, with, with the big updates on the car prior to Sardinia, the, the Fox dampers that we've seen on the cars, uh, some, some uh, more, some stronger hardware on the steering. Three minute signal, three minute signal. Well, there we go. You're hearing race control just saying three minutes to the next car. But that, oh, what a way to start your weekend. Yep, certainly not what they would have hoped for. They'll have to come back really hard when it comes to qualifying to just to push themselves through. And unfortunately for them, it's a case of hoping somebody else goes worse, I suppose. Um, next car up will be the Apt Cooper car. But let's replay you a little bit of action from on board the Andretti United car. So it's drone shot as they come down towards the finish line. Up and over the crest, you can see how long you can fly it there.
They're just about getting over the crest of the down ramp. You always want to try and land on a down ramp. Landing to flat is a hard impact, and that's what happened to Yuta yesterday. Not only did she put it on the nose, but she landed to flat. She hit the jump some 20 kilometers now faster than Johan Christofferson, so full commitment, but unfortunately, it, it, it just flew at the wrong angle and uh, didn't go the way she wanted. So in comes Clara Anderson. She's just 22 years old, but she has been an ace in rallycross. She's one of the drivers to watch out for. And certainly when it comes to looking around for a female to join your team, she'd be right up there. Couldn't do it last time. Actually, she was scheduled to take part in the first race of this season, but then got COVID. Yeah. Couldn't take part. She did do the rookie test last year. And also, of course, she's been the championship driver at a couple of events, as Jenny said. So. Um, into the car this time. No pressure alongside Nasser Alatia, the uh, Dakar <laughs> legend. But Clara's been doing a good job herself. She won a class in Swedish Rallycross last year, rear-wheel drive category there. And she's just come uh, fresh off a podium at the Portuguese round of the FIA World Rallycross Championship. She's the first woman ever to stand on the podium in the FIA World Rallycross Championship. Brilliant performance by her for the CE dealer team. Uh, that's an electric series as well, so she's got some experience of electric four-wheel drive, but this is a very different kettle of fish than, than what she was driving last weekend. How best do you overcome well, those nerves on the start line? It's such a personal thing. For me, this is the point at which it really starts to build up. You get the one-minute board. Look, she's just flexing her fingers out. There'll be some processes that you go through. You can be helped a lot by the team as well. And we've said, haven't we, how much we know Johan has helped in various little things. I remember he said something funny to Molly, didn't he, once when she got in the car. And he said something witty to her just when she got in the car. Your team can be in your ear now and just saying, chill, you're all good. No expectations here. Get out, get it round. They may have told her we want you to absolutely send it. but, But a process she has been out she did a shakedown this morning in the championship vehicle so she at least knows a little bit because everybody else went out yesterday for practice so let's see she's used to taking a start if she does rally cross yeah so seconds. she's got an eye across to the light and when it goes green off she can go and the timing beam will be cut and it will start I'm really pleased for Clara. She's absolutely lovely. I've, I've met her on numerous occasions in uh, in various different rallycross paddocks, and this is a great opportunity for her. Um, one of the things that's so fantastic about Extreme of course, is that we've seen some of these brilliant women drivers who you might not have seen if you're not into your, you know, if you're not a rallycross nerd, you won't have seen some of these uh, some of these drivers before. And I'm just I'm enjoying the fact that we're seeing them get their their moment in the spotlight. This is. A big spotlight on Anderson now. She'll want to do a good job for Alatir because we know that Alatir is competitive uh, among the males. Yeah, once again, they were beset by problems. They've only got six points in this championship so far, but they had so many process issues last time out. They got huge penalties. So it's about bringing this car home, but it's also about being smart when it comes to switch zones, not panicking too much, just taking a breath. Learn from everything that Jutta Kleinschmidt clearly would have tried to try to help her with. Um, and we do wish you to the very best and get well soon. But let's see what Anderson can do out there. And you can see in green she is catching at the moment. Yeah, a couple of seconds lost in those first sectors. You can just see just, you know, the inevitable, you said it, Jenny, at the start, the inevitable nerves. You know, she's got the weight of a, don't forget, this is a, effectively a manufacturer back squad. Cooper are backing this so that they've, they've got the, the bodywork of the Cooper Tabascan, I think it is, on the, uh, on the car. Um, along with uh, Hummer, of course, done the same with the Hummer EVR for Chip Ganassi Racing. See, that's why their bodywork looks different. Underneath, it's exactly the same car, but, you know, it's that team with the manufacturer behind it, and they signed NASA Alatia. It, that was a brilliant signing at the start of this year. She's only five seconds down at this point, and this is literally this is her second lap in the car this weekend. All the other drivers have had four laps up to this point. She would have had a record this morning. Maybe she might have got two laps. She might have got two laps, but that would have been it. So, let's see what she's doing. She comes out of that Continental Traction Challenge. She wants to carry as much speed through. You could hear Andrew talk talking about the momentum of this car, the swing of it, the rhythm that you can find yourself into. And these drivers have so much experience. Even though Clara is your young woman, she still has plenty of car experience. So she knows what she's doing. And, and really, as soon as you can get in the car and into your momentum, you're going. The nerves go away, don't they? You're just fully focused on driving this car as fast as you can to try and help out your teammate as much as you can. Yeah, you're just full of adrenaline, maximum focus on board with her now. Look, sunglasses on for the low sun. Just flicking the car around underneath her, watching those inputs. 11 seconds down now, don't, I wouldn't be remotely concerned about that as a first run in the car. And, uh, Jenny, you may have said as well, you know, she competes in rallycross, so one of the advantages Clara does have over maybe some of the other female competitors is she's very used to door-to-door -door racing. So that, 
the, the thing getting her elbows out and getting stuck in in Q2 is not going to bother Clara at all, where some people, that would have been another thing to learn. She's got that nailed already. Yeah, just doing a good, steady job out there, and I think that's all you can ask for at the moment. You've got a, a certain amount, a certain degree of learning that you have to go through in these cars. Clara, a big disadvantage, so she just needs to soak it all up. Well, let's not forget as well that we're comparing her time here to Christofferson's teammate, Michaela Arlen Kotlinski, who was seven and a half seconds quicker than Emma Gilmore, than Tamara Molinaro. Uh, you can't talk about Katie because she had a, a power steering problem. So if you take that off, she's actually only five, six seconds off the pace of the championship regulars so far. So, yeah, good, good run for Clara, I think, on her first outing. Alatia will be getting himself into position in the switch zone. Now, the switch, as I said, something that they've not really mastered so well. Last time out, we saw the team getting the hustle on and saying, come on, go, go, go. But actually, it didn't help at all. So it'll be interesting to see if they've just changed that up. Of course, different person in the car, but how relaxed can they be? How instilled in the memory can they make it? Because that's one of the things they need to do, just take the pressure out. We did say that, didn't we? It was one of the, one of the things we felt that some of the teams really needed to up their game in terms of switch. It's, it's that one, it's time limited. Some of the teams are sitting there for 10 seconds waiting to go, all fully chilled, ready to push the button, ready to go. That would so be us, wouldn't it? Uh, We'd I, so be all over well, that. We would, actually, yeah, I think we would, Jenny. I reckon we would. <laughs> we we, yeah, we can handle bit. getting in and out of a car, can't we? The other um, bit I'm not so sure about. We're, we're, make, we're making it sound very easy, but as you'll see in a moment, it's not that easy. So Sebastian Loeb last time having a right moan, wasn't he, about the uh, the door net, which he didn't like and used a particular, particularly un-television friendly word uh, to describe. It wasn't that bad. We translate. It, it yeah, was fine. It, yeah, <laughs> it, but he, he wasn't happy about it. But it's it, all those things. There, there, there's been some clarification in between the events uh, about what you can do. You can have two sets of crutch belts. So they're the belts that come up from the bottom of the seat over your lap. And they're really critical because the driver moves forward or backward. You, you might see a seat insert come in or out. So you can have two sets of those, but the other belts have to be uh, a single set. So out comes Clara. In goes NASA. Now, Clara's going to help with his belts on the outside. You can see his comms lead up on top of his crash helmet. She pulls over the left strap for him, and now she's going to do up the door net. That's the thing which so delayed X44 last time. Door shut, so Clara's done her bit. Left side of the harness is on. They're really heavy doors, actually. When I got into one of the Odyssey 21s, I was surprised at how heavy it is, how hard it is to manoeuvre into the seat alone. So Yeah, it's a long way in. You've got to climb over both the bodywork and the roll cage. That's a good switch. Calm. You're sitting waiting. That's what you want. You just Five seconds is enough, but you don't want it to be two. You don't want to be looking up, have I got time, have I got time, go, 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 press the button, go. It's no good. That's when you end up getting penalties and mistakes. So Alatia now will be comparing his split times to Johan Christophson. He uses the hyperdrive immediately. So that's interesting. We've not seen that. He obviously feels there's a lot to be gained, and he's right. Because look at the speed now, carrying it all the way out the start, finish straight. Interesting. Really interesting. Considering that his car number five, it does give a little bit of the game away, potentially, to show what they're going to plan on doing. But I think it's a really good tactic to try and use. Really flat, loads of traction there. They can really knuckle down for those four seconds. And as you say, take a lot of that speed in now Alatia one of just four of the drivers who have actually driven in Chile before not here admittedly but it's a very unique atmosphere to be in yeah he's over here for the Dakar of course the Dakar rally was over in South America for a number of years it, it's now in Saudi Arabia but it was over here uh, I can't remember years four from I think from the mid noughties maybe no late noughties I think it started over there um, unbelievable terrain, of course, just vast expanses of landscape. Alatia, 18.2 down, so he's not denting that lead too much. He has gone fastest in that first sector by some four seconds, uh, according to the timing screen. Now, Four seconds worth of hyperdrive. Yeah, don't forget, <laughs> though, that's in comparison to the sector one will also be from the finish line round to sector. It's a bit of a weird one because sector one comes from two different places. One of them is from the exit of the switch zone and the other one is from, from uh, sector four round to the end of sector one. So it's hard to compare, but definitely a good move on the hyperdrive. Really interesting. Yuta was also fast there yesterday. Before she had her incident in the car, she set one of the fastest times in that sector one. So that car really likes sector one. Whatever they've done, it likes that part of the course. Yeah. I'll tell you, the other car that looked dialed is the one that's coming in next, which is the GMC uh, Hummer EV, <laughs> Chip Ganassi Racing. 
Uh, they, both Kyle LeDuc, their team manager as well, they've kind of been using the word dialed. I think they're, I think they're loving this course. Him and Sarah Price are used to that kind of trophy truck style of racing, and this track is much more uh, in that vein. So I'm, I'm excited to see what they can do on their run, which is coming up after at Cooper. I really like watching Alantia drive. I like the style of it, the flair, the kick out, everything. Look at the amount of rocks, Jenny, in that big banked bend. When you've got a pack there, those rocks are massive. And I don't think you won't see any screens broken, um, but, but you are going to see impacts from those. But also, it's cutting up just a little bit. Uh, the track was very damp this morning when we first started the session. Uh, bear in mind, it's morning in Chile. I know we're afternoon here in, in Europe. Um, and that was where they'd wetted the track down with seawater. What we've yet to discover is is whether that was quicker or slower. There were certain points which were off camber which definitely looked slower when they were down, but there'll be other places where the traction would have been up a little bit. So we don't really know which way the track is developing yet. Yeah, that's a really good point. And this track will develop across the course of the weekend because it's being used so many times. You pointed out yesterday, Andrew, that they're doing four laps. They've not done four laps anywhere else. So like for like, if you're trying to compare, it's quite difficult to compare a lap three to a lap four, but the lap four is what the guys are on right now. Alatia bringing it round. Going decently. They only get one hyperdrive per two laps, so each driver can only deploy once. They've updated his sector one, so they've updated it so it wasn't as quick as it showed. But sector two, he's fastest there by literally a couple of hundred. So Alatia is on a massive push here. He wasn't quite as quick in sector three, didn't use because uh, he used his hyperdrive earlier. Where some of the other drivers have He's coming through. This is the very, very fast last corner, and they will go flat out over the finish. And it's P4 for them. So into fourth, 20.5 seconds off. A little bit of work to do, but it's Clara Anderson's first time in the car. There she is in the command centre. Good job. Yeah, I think so. Nerves, get the nerves out of the way. No major issues, good switch. I don't know if the nerves ever get out of the way. You know, I, the, I know the, they'll the, diminish first, every the time you thing. do it. The more you do it, the, the, yeah. the more it becomes routine, doesn't it? I just, I'm a nervy person. Me too. Can't help it. Me too. But it can help bring out a performance. That's the other thing is you can harness it and use it in the right way. It's whether or not you let it dominate you or not. Yeah. We're going to have a chat, actually, in Five, uh, the command centre with three, Kyle LeDuc, two, who's going to be one, up next. So Sarah Price will be in the GMC Hummer EV down on the start line. Kyle LeDuc is in the command centre. Kyle, good to see you there. Um, you've, we've seen on your social media, we keep seeing the word dialed from you and various members of the team. This place looks like it's built for you guys. How are we feeling ahead of going out for your Q1 run? Yeah, there's been a lot of people saying that same thing, but that uh, that's a lot of pressure on us, right? <laughs> uh, no, we're, like I said, we we are we are dialed. The car is in a, a really good place. We've uh, we've really locked in the suspension. I think we're really confident with the setup, and uh, both of us both of us are super confident behind the wheels. So that's uh, nine tenths of the game right there. But um, we had a good practice one, practice two. Um, always room for improvement. We're not both at the top of the charts. So we uh, we've been working hard, talking about it, reviewing a lot of. Burned about 50 laps on this track last night and uh, ready to go out there for qualifying today. Is there a group tactic between you guys, Kyle? Because obviously the three teams trying to chase down Rosberg X Racing are you, the Science Axiona team, and X44. How are you going to try and stop them getting enough points this weekend to keep the challenge and the championship alive? Well, we haven't quite started an, al uh, an alliance yet, but uh, <laughs> I think we're, uh, we, we all. We all have the same end goal, you know. We want—I mean, good job to them. They're—they're uh, they're winning races, and, and they're both super fast drivers. So, um, hats off to them. But we are—we uh, are a team that is determined. So, we're gonna keep pushing. You know, this Chip Ganassi GMC Hummer EV team is—is is definitely uh, always always one to watch. But uh, we need to—we need to have m more moments, more times on the podium to uh, try to nip this championship back. All right, Cut. we wish you and Sarah the best of luck. Uh, go and get it. Thanks, dude. <laughs> so thumbs up from Kyle LeDuc. Very much looking forward to seeing uh, just how hard they are willing to go. There is the Vodafone Command Center, suitably dusty. Three, two, one. One minute signal. One minute until Sarah Price will head off then for GMC Hummer EV Chip Ganassi Racing. They've taken that win. They'll want another win, Jenny. They'll want a win which doesn't involve the stewards. You want to cross the line first. They should have had that in Sardinia last year when they were miles in front and had that issue with the car, which was gutting for them. 
but the monkey's off the back in terms of getting the win. But they've got to, they've got to get more. They've got to beat RXR here. If RXR win, this is over. So they, it, it's all, it, all in now. All yeah. in. 32 points is the gap between Chip Ganassi Racing and RXR. So let's see what they can do going out there. They need a bit of luck. They're starting in position one for this session. So let's see. Eyes on that red sign, which is go. 15 seconds. There we go. 15 seconds is the count. And Sarah Price waiting eagerly to get her first spin in qualifying and see what she can do around this Copper X pre track. See on the dashboard there the little D light flashing. That's to say it's in drive. <laughs> Drive an automatic car. Bit of wheel spin off the line, and now it's about carrying as much speed as you can up through those first turns as we ride off all the rest of this. The view you'll see on the start, remember, this will be five cars in the next session later on today. Now it comes into the right hand side. There's a reminder of the Inoa Hyperdrive, a little boost for uh, four seconds. We may see people use that off the start, Jenny, but either way, I know we're going to see people passing in these two corners. You are right, there, are left, there, are right. It, it, it's going to be exceptionally busy off the start. Yeah, that slingshot as well looks like it's cutting up quite nicely, so it's going to make it even more difficult. You don't want to really get yourself in the ruts. You want to stay high if you can, but some people choosing a totally different strategy and going low. So fascinating to watch the different types of entry, exit and line through these courses. Yeah, that's the point, isn't it? You, when you're running on your own, you take the line which is best for momentum. When you are trying to pass somebody, you don't care about momentum as long as you get the pass done. You might lose a bit of time to somebody else in front or behind you, but a block pass, you know, go in deep, push them wide, push them up the banking, shower them in dirt, whatever you have to do <laughs> to get the pass done, because from now on, it's about position. Yo, know, can you win it and get more points in qualifying for winning that race in Q2? Can you win your semi-final your crazy race and progress through? So once we get into race, your lap time and momentum isn't quite so important. Hyperdrive up the hill, that's where we know the pace is. Yep, so they're very confident in this tactic of using it up the hill, much like we saw with McLaren. They use it up the hill as well, bringing as much speed as you can into this Continental Traction Challenge section as well as they just pop out of that, take some air as well. A lovely landing on the descent there for Sarah Price. She's giving it everything here. And this is a course where you can do that. It's safe for the cars. You can really push it. The new Fox suspension as well, meaning you you don't have to take so many risks. You can just go out there and go fast. Yeah, absolutely. Full commitment we saw, didn't we? It made such a big difference in Sardinia. It's dead. For me, it's the best upgrade we've had on the car, without a shadow of a doubt. Three seconds down after the first lap. That's very, very much in touch. Remember, it was it was only RXR's... Uh, Chris Oxford's teammate, sorry. Michaela Arnikoklinski. <laughs> the, the Mac. Return yeah. of the Mac. It was only Michaela. <laughs> Timing screen's only showing, uh, yeah, the one set of names. Apologies, uh, Michaela. Uh, I wished a happy birthday the other day, and it was, it was a month too early. So oh. <laughs> <laughs> you are going to get all no, right. I'm getting it all moment. wrong. I'm going to I'm have to buy her a drink, can't I? But Michaela was so quick. As we said, she was seven seconds up the road. So if Sarah keeps this pace up, she'll be bang on the pace of, of the drivers who've gone before her. They've already said that their experience coming into this, doing the American-style truck racing, really helps them to try and tackle this course. It's almost like it was designed to give them every chance. It's not, this is just the way that the calendar drops out, but this one I think for them is a little bit of a home advantage when it comes to what they're having to deal with out there. Yeah, the style of the track suits the style of racing which they've both done the most of. We, we've had tracks, haven't we, where we felt it suited Loeb or it suited Science, it suited the Dakar drivers or yeah, the rally cross drivers, but this one is, is definitely one that's, that would be to their advantage. And it, they, they need that result, Jenny. They've got to beat RXR. And as, as you alluded to in the question with Kyle LeDuc just before this session, they need the other teams to beat RXR as well to take this to the final round. Yeah, they certainly do. A little bit of stone and rock just bouncing around out there, as you can see, when there are five cars on track later. That could be more of an issue. Um, but just thinking about what they need to try and do, they need to try and get the traction challenge away as well. They need to try and get as many points as they can to take them away from Rosberg X Racing. Yeah, I'm looking at sector three on the timing screen, and uh, at the minute, it's Christopherson who's quickest with a 34.586. But bear in mind, that Continental Traction Challenge is both drivers together. So we, what we don't have is we don't have the Michaela's data on screen as well, once you add that up together. And at the end of this session, they'll publish a, a standings, and, and from then on, we can see what that gap is. But that, those five points are, are absolutely critical. Yeah, be fascinating to see how it shakes down. So into the switch zone. 
They've had a couple of issues along the way, but I think they've refined their technique in the number 99 car. And out goes into the first bait. They'll do the switch. Remember, only one technician, mechanic, engineer, whoever it may be, allowed into that zone, along with the two drivers. Out comes the insert. Just discarded there. They'll pick it up. It's fine. I like the way Kyle climbs in. He uses the steering column. It's very much grab that, climb in. It's, it's all... It's... Yeah, it's dialed, like they say the car is. Second nature now as well to them. It's going automatically, isn't it? They're mm. not having to think about it too much. They just do it. Interesting, it's got a nice pair of sunnies on because it is bright out there. The only other relevant experience you could have, by the way, is if you've been on the moon and driven. Yes, well, they, they said, didn't they, 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 in their interviews, it's like being on Mars. Interesting there, Kyle was going to call the other team member over. I noticed, Jenny, they didn't use both team members to, to, uh, to do the harnesses. It was just Sarah. So Sarah was there, he's going to call him over, and then he said, no, no, we're good, and they shut the door. Good stuff. Right, so limited to 30 kilometres an hour. You can see the salt flats in the background. It's a beautiful location to go racing in Chile. Cold at night, warm in the day, nightmare to pack for. <laughs> yeah, windy, wasn't it? We've seen the dust devils. <laughs> Right, we're off again then, and this will be Leduc. What can Kyle do out there? We know he has an aggressive style, sometimes too aggressive, but can you be too aggressive around this track? I don't know. I don't, I just, what was the gap when they came in? It wasn't much, was it? It was So eight seconds down now would see them straight into P2. So this would see them into P2. I think making up eight seconds on Christophson will be a big ask, but they'd be very happy with P2 because that would massively put them in touch in the next session. So good run, very good run by Sarah Price in the car, first of all, an impressive start by her, keeping Kyle LeDuc in, uh, in touch. Remember, this is only the first of another five cars set to go out, so they've still got to protect as well. They've got to think forward. There's a lot of good and fast cars still to come, including top qualifiers from last season. They've dropped off a little bit this year, but X44. Look at the commitment over the crest there from Kyle LeDuc, absolutely on the limit. The car just floating underneath that beautiful moment where you're just floating on the limit of grip over the top of a crest they're on the brakes they're coming down the hill just dips into the sand at the bottom then back on the uh i was gonna say the gas pedal throttle pedal uh, no gas involved of course until we get to the uh, the hydrogen power to extreme h you know then, then we can get back on the gas pedal interesting no hyperdrive yet that i've seen for carla duke didn't use it going up the hill in lap one so maybe that's a lap two treat for yeah, us they've done lap two most of the while so uh, interesting oh yeah that way at least if you if you were to have a half spin for instance you, your best recovery would be to use the hyperdrive to get away like we saw with naturality here from a standing start so Doing it on the second lap, he's giving yourself a reserve in case you have an issue somewhere else and you, you want to try and not lose too much time. Here we go with the big jump on board. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, full send. I would like to see people with scorecards down at the bottom of that jump. It's just such a beautiful opportunity and it just looks absolutely fantastic on our cameras. The drone shots racing to keep up with the GMC Hummer EV Chip Ganassi racing car, the number 99 dashing through the desert. There's that rocky banked bend through now the right-hander and then watch trying to carry the speed when they try and come onto this back straight. So they come up over the top of the ridge line up here. We watched Timmy Hansen yesterday. He came through this long left-hander, so it's kind of double apex. And Timmy was on the throttle the whole way through, but he ran the nose a bit wide and he had to lift. And I know what he was trying to do. He was trying to carry as much speed as possible through to this drop and then onto the straight. And he, he was too much and the car was going to run wide and he had to lift. So that, that yeah, that's the payoff. That's what they're trying to do is to, is to carry the momentum through. Great job by Leduc here as he enters the Continental Traction Challenge. Let's see if he goes for it this time. Not denting the lead too much. There's been sectors where he's catching the sectors where he's not, but he is very much on the pace of Christopherson. Yeah, looks so rapid at the moment as he dips down. He's just on a 31.3 in sector two. What can he do in this traction there challenge? He uses the hyperdrive up the hill. We expected it to do it over the crest. He goes up high, jumps down. Then he swings it round to the left, then to the right and takes that wide looping line the dirt kicking up in the air as well is catching catching that's exactly the same place we saw chris Johnson have a moment on his second lap so it seems the hyperdrive jenny makes you jump a little bit too much over the crest and then turn in he went big over yuta's jump as well now he's just trying to carry as much speed as he can through to the finish line this i think he's going to see the p2 it's very close between them and neil mclaren extreme e up he's got one sector to go now coming down for the jump can they nick the second place they can into p2 price and the duke 
who are the closest to RXR in that championship fight. Fist pump from Leduc because they know they've got the job done here in Q1. Great job by him and Sarah Price, and it's on. And it certainly is because he's just taken the fastest sector three, which is the traction challenge, if I'm not mistaken. And he's you, done yeah. it by an absolute whisker, by like six hundredths. So it's really close between the two of them, between Leduc and Christofferson. And you can just see the traction challenge postings up there. The combined times looking a little uh, different. Look, but yes. my word, Leduc did a great shout to get himself ahead of Christofferson's time because this changes throughout the course of the weekend. You can set your fastest time across any different session. That will be interesting there, Jenny, is the track degradation, won't it? Whether whether or not it gets quicker or slower. 0.32 of a second between. So near McLaren, it's Emma Gilmore and Tanner Faust are really, really close to those five championship points. They're not really in the championship fight being down in P8 at the minute. But that doesn't matter. It's about RXR not getting it. If RXR secure those five points, for instance, if the track starts to get slower, then I think I think the others are all in trouble. The five points would effectively, I think, tie the championship up for them. We'll have to check whether or not they can afford to finish in fifth place in the final if they got those five points. We'll do some math tonight and we'll figure it out. You've hurt my head, just even well, mentioning that. But the that. thing is, you can't guarantee it because there is a chance the five points could be nicked tomorrow, but they can put themselves in uh, yeah, a very motorsport uh, pole position to take the series if they get those five points. At the minute, they're they're right up there, but it's uh, it's close, isn't it, on lap times and on the Continental Traction Challenge. Here's a replay of the Duke through that last sector. Look, as close as you can to the flag on the left, and now light it. There you go. Great awesome. job thing of beauty to watch that was it absolutely brilliant i think the design of this course is done really well you can see the climate the atmosphere making it even tougher for our drivers there are altitude as well so some of them finding it pretty heavy going out there but not carla duke he made that look relatively easy really good job by them and still four more cars to go So Kyle Leduc undoes his uh, helmet comms there, and we're going to have a catch up with NASA Alatia with Laura Winter. It's been quite the 24 hours for Apt Cooper and NASA Alatia is joining me now. I think first things first, and everybody watching at home will want to know how Jutta Kleinschmidt's doing. Yeah, I think Jutta she's okay, you know, and uh, I just I feel really sorry, and also the the, the teams, you know, because uh, she have. Um, small crash yesterday and but she's okay and uh, yeah uh, this is uh, also the the race and uh, now uh, we have uh, lara yeah uh, just to have uh, you know um, uh, learn uh, a little bit you know and fast you know and uh, she did that really uh, good job and uh, yeah we we are, we are quite happy I mean, how is Clara doing? How is she adapting to the car? And how much are you teaching her with all of your vast experience? It's not enough to, to teach her, you know, but uh, because, OK, uh, she needs to, to have uh, more experience of this kind of car, you know, but OK, she's a great uh, driver. And, uh, and I think just uh, what she did uh, now, it's really uh, a good job. And uh, I think for second, uh, second run, it will be uh, better for her. Now we'll uh, compare all the data and just where she can improve, you know, and uh, yeah, I think uh, we are lucky also to, to be in the race. It's early days, Q2 obviously to come. Uh, we will see you out on track again very soon. We're going to head back to the action on track. Uh, thank you very much, Nasa Alatia, and do send our best to Clara as well on her first outing here, and indeed to Yuta as well, um, who we wish her all the best out there. Thank you very thank much you to so Nasa, much. and we will see you very soon. We still have JBXC, Axiona, Science, X4, X44, Vida Carbon Racing, uh, all to come out on track. It's going to be exciting to see how they will take on the single lap quali here, single run quali, much more to come. Yeah, thanks to Laura Winter, who's down there doing all the hard work and running around after us whenever yeah, something yeah, exciting happens, to... getting all the information. And as you heard from all of us, we wish Jutta Kleinschmidt the very best after her crash yesterday. She's gone for precautionary checks, stayed in hospital overnight. So hopefully she'll be on, on her way home soon. So these are some of the best bits from the action you've just seen. And as we were talking about, this is car 125, Nasser Alatia teaming up with Clara Anderson, the newest driver to the pack. And it seems like all of our championship drivers are just taking their moment to shine in the light.
Yeah, championship driver is the stepping stone to getting a drive in the championship, isn't it? It's uh, Fraser McConnell surely up next, isn't he? We're, yes. we're just going to have to keep digging deep and trying to find someone to take over, aren't we? But, uh, yeah, unfortunate for you, to, as Jenny said, and just wishing her all the best. That's the most important thing. Q1 coming towards the end of the session. We've got four cars left to go. JBXC are up next. They are the only team that have chosen to put the male driver in first, Jenny, and that is going to sculpt the way they go forward this weekend. It, it varies from session to session. Yeah, it's really interesting that they've done that. So Kevin in the car first, which means he'll go in second later in the second qualifying session. Um, so it'll, it'll be his teammate who has to take the start off the line. And, and Hedda, we saw her last time out. She was fearless. Yeah, she was, wasn't she? Yeah, absolutely got into it door to door. Uh, also used to a bit of race action. So Hedda, Hedda not too worried about it. It's, it's, so yeah, you know, you know, we don't know why the teams choose to do what they do. What I do like is the fact that they, they are the first people to alternate the strategy. And that just puts them in a slightly different position in terms of who's in the car first. We've been comparing the female drivers the whole way through, and now Kevin Hansen's going up against them, and it will depend what he comes in with, what kind of a gap he can give Hedda. Hedda's not as experienced as someone like Johan Christofferson. We wouldn't expect her necessarily to match his times right now. But last time out, he came in, if you remember, and gave her a, a great lead, and, and they got the job done and made it to the final. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I also I like the, the, the fact that you can either be the, the chaser or the chase, can't you? And, yeah. and some people respond to that quite people like to have the pressure put on them some people like to go out from the lead so that all feeds into it as well but as you say JBXC just doing something different and giving themselves an opportunity with strategy just to be on the flip side yeah they've got the podium in round two in Sardinia unfortunately uh, only went as far as the crazy race in round three Ooh. that doesn't sound good no that doesn't sound good at all have we picked up something? Have we picked up a different noise about camera there, or is that a noise on board with Kevin? It's with Kevin. Yeah, listen to the transmission. So something severe broken there from the set. I don't think it's drive sharp. Wouldn't be surprised if it's prop sharp. Well, mind you, might not be a prop. Depends how the transmission to run. Of course, with electric, could be front to front and rear separate. Yeah. We run a prop shaft on the... I mean, he's still managing to get the car around. I mean, it, yeah, it gonna, they're gonna looks, lose tons of time. looks horrible at the moment for him, but it's still got some sort of drive and some sort you might of traction well, You might there. as well finish the run because it, it, yeah. you never know if somebody else is going to go slower. Get the I, car back. It's, it's drive for me, something in drive, Jenny, because going up the hill, he didn't have the traction. So they've lost either one or two of the, of the driven wheels, Oops. depending on what's broken. Yeah, not ideal. And I didn't see anything really that... that that's sort of smacked. Oh, he's avoided the jump, so he's taken a line to the. Now the problem with that, so Kevin's done. I know why he's done that. He's done that to try and look after the car, but he's missed a waypoint. But he might well be thinking, you know what? The 10 second for missing a waypoint, it, it doesn't Master really matter. Evils. Yeah, exactly. Don't give the team too much to do. They may even have been on the radio and said to him, "Skip the jump, mate." So in the first and second sectors, he was actually doing a really decent time. He he'd made some good times, and then now in sector three, he's up by seven seconds on the best time. So it's really trying to drag this car around. But he is taking another lap, which is the most important thing. He's not taking it into the switch. He's not giving up yet. So it's just going to have to be all out for Hansen and Hossas. And this is really going to test Hossas. We've seen power steering go. We've seen some Herculean efforts from some of the drivers through the course of this championship. But this is something else for Hedda to learn as well, Jenny. Now she's going to have to get into what is effectively a broken car and, and nurse it round. I'm absolutely certain she'll be capable of it, but it, it, it's another skill that she maybe won't have come back. Look, she's been in motorsport long enough. She's probably broken a car. But whether she's broken one as big and heavy as... Uh, uh, and obviously 21, I don't know. I wonder if there's anything they can do as a temp fix when they come into the switch zone. It's not such it's a catastrophic yeah, problem, that's the thing, isn't it? But um, just do your chest pumps and you get out there and, and see I'd what like you to, can do. Have a look from here and see if we can see either of the wheels spinning more. You can hear how much it's struggling to get up the hills. It, it, it could even be, you know, the failure of a motor. Um, affecting either the front or the rear. Yeah, so now they're under, in, under investigation for missing the finish yeah, line gate. Now, we've seen that happen before, and it was a whopper of a penalty. It wasn't I just a normal waypoint. It was 30-second penalty. Because it was the finish. Yeah, yeah but, but it's, it's, not, but the it's finish. not the finish. Yeah, so. it's not the finish. It's, it's actually a waypoint. I, I get what they're saying. Yeah. They're calling it the finish because it's not probably doesn't have a number, and that's what they're referring to. 
Right, so we get the radio coming in there. Something number two. Yeah, it might well be a, it might be a dash position. Or Jenny. it might just be yeah. which position obey to. So get Not it into uh, bay two. Right, probably. listen in, listen in. What do you want first out? Jack. Right, they're taking the jack. No. Right, Kevin's talking about more front torques as he knows there's an issue with the car that they were saying, Jack, he said, I can't see a puncture. Bear in mind, the guys down there at Switchstone probably can't see the feed. Didn't hear what we heard. Just seeing if we can hear anything. Yeah, I don't think we need to power cycle, but... There's some of them from me, Steve and Bill. They're not to the back. They're not to the back, yeah. They're not to the back, yeah. So they're but not going to power cycle. Speed, a power cycle. I don't think yeah, that's going to help. It was mechanical, Jenny. You could hear it. You know, it, 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 for something electric, yeah, you restart it like you do your phone or your Mac or your PC. But uh, it's tight on the on the belts. Look on the side. They're struggling to get that in. Okay, P2. Right. There we go. Tell her about the pit speed limiter. So, yeah. It, they switched to uh, so Norwegians and Swedes talk to each other in. Uh, so just coaching her around, saying make sure the pit limit is on. They don't want to get caught speeding in that zone again because that's another hefty fine that would be befall them and beset them. Severely down on time in that run. Nothing that Hansen can do, but what can Hossas do now? She's enabling the power again. Well, what she can do, Jenny, is try to stay ahead of Genesis Andretti United. So bear in mind, they finished, but in a 9.56. So they're around a minute and seven back. If you weren't watching earlier, they uh, had a, a pit lane infringement, basically leaving the switch zone. Now, Timmy, of course, had just cycled the car, so did they have an issue when he cycled the car because Katie had lost her power steering, so did they then lose the uh, the power steering? Look how bumpy it is up there. So, basically, she just needs to try... She lost 16 seconds again already. Needs to try and bring it home in under 9.56, and that'll be ninth instead of 10th. It sounds like nothing, but that one point, if they had a good result in Q2, might be the difference between a crazy race or a semi, so you've got to try you have, and it's all learning experiences as well for Hedda Hossas. You can go out there and just wrestle this car around. It won't be pretty. It, it, it won't do what she wants it to do. It won't react in the way she wants it to. But that's neither here nor there. Just get it home. So in, we're hearing initial thoughts from the paddock of front right drive shaft, which would go with what me and Jenny thought in commentary here. Just the loud, clattering, banging noises. That's usually a shaft moving around underneath. There are some electric vehicles which run up as well. These ones don't. So, it's, yeah, drive shaft-wise, not ideal. Now, just change the way the car turns in but most importantly it's that steep climb that's coming up now watch this and listen in here this is where it really struggles listen to this on the climb so what happens is you get too much power to the rear and of course maybe also a little power to the front left and, and then the car pulls and the rear wheels spin and you don't get the traction it doesn't climb as well 47 seconds down now coming up 48 she's got a whole nother lap to go she's only got around 20 seconds in hand no yeah 20 seconds in hand on on uh, genesis andretti united yeah, is she going to miss the finish line, Jenny? Yeah, what that's the question. Will they take it? Will they not take it? If she misses it again, of course, that's another investigation. It's hard to take that one slowly and still not do anything to the car because the way it's built is a round it's up a and straight yeah. down. So you can't really just go over. Let's see what she chooses to do. So she's, she's going, going over it. But I don't, just, a, just a thought, Jenny. <laughs> it, it's too late, of course, because Kevin's done it. So, so you, you look at you, so they're 53 down. They'll definitely get 10 for it which makes it 63, and they've only got 67 in hand. So if she drops another four seconds, they're going to end up behind Genesis Andretti United. But I think for them, the battle is to get the car home. It so is, have yeah. a DNF here is not the way you want to go. There are still three cars to go. So, OK, you might not yeah. be able to post a decent time out there because the damage to the car is so high, but just get it home because we've seen before the difference of just even a few metres can make a difference when it comes to what you Somebody you're... could roll it, yeah, yeah, they might not make it as as far as you wheel off puncture, there's all sorts of things that will take longer than a minute. Yeah, and we've still got X44 Vida Carbon, Veloce Racing and the Axiona Science team. So three big hitters out there, but three that have been beset by problems as we've gone through this championship. Heda Hozas there using the handbrake. You can see her reaching down for that. There it is again. She's just pulling on that to try and get a bit of rotation in the car. It'd be feeling very awkward to drive compared to when all four wheels have got that drive. 
don't think they're going to be challenging for a time here in the uh, traction challenge, unfortunately for them. No. But that's not the name of their game right now. Such a shame because they tried something different. They wanted to, you know, shake things up. They've gone with a, the different lineup of putting Hansen in first ahead of Hossas, and that will count for a lot at the minute. How will that play out in the next session? So the next session, head of Hossas will take the wheel at the start. We know she got her elbows out, and then Kevin Hansen will take over for the second sector. So the second two laps of the race, you, you know, it, he's gonna. They're, they're both gonna have to race hard and pass. But potentially, if Kevin was looking to catch, he's got to catch and pass. So, yeah, different tactics. All still to play for. It's not game over yet. They're all going through, remember. All ten cars make it through to the semis or the crazy race. Top two go through from each three-car semi-final, and the top one goes through from the four-car crazy race to a five-car final. So it, it's not over until you haven't made it to the final, and they will know that. This isn't a big job to fix a drive shaft either, but it's just not what you want to at the start of your weekend. So Hossas comes around to take the finish, jumps up over, lands it. Not the time that they would have wanted, down by one minute, 12, and on average it was about about six, five to six seconds slower every time. I think she had no cable. comms. She had oh. no comms. She'd left the comms velcro to the top of her crash helmet. So when they turn and remember the pit limiter and everything else, she she couldn't hear them anyway. I would have done that. <laughs> but it's stressful, <laughs> isn't it? And it's even more stressful when you know the car's broken. Good job, I think. Oh, frustrating for them. Let's go down and try and find out exactly what went on. Kevin Hansen, uh, it sounded like a drive shaft from from our end. What, what was it, your end? Yeah, it was exactly that. Uh, front drive shaft. They broke already on waypoint uh, 11 on the first lap, so uh, it was really, really tricky to drive. But uh, I mean, we got through it, and just a shame. I and mean, we had uh, worked really hard overnight to have a good speed, and I think it was most good possibility to be to be up there. So it just put us uh, on, on the back foot. But you know, our team, we never stop fighting. I know, Kevin, tough break for you. Just tell us, what was the sensation like in the car? How different was it to usual? Well, very different. I mean, you lose uh, one of the wheels to drive. It's, it's, uh, it's very strange. And uh, I mean, it sends all the, all the power to, to one front wheel. So it was understeering like, like crazy. So uh, um, it was struggling. And on, over the finish line, you know, with the problem, uh, don't want to take that big jump. You know, it's, it's so risky uh, that early stage. And then we made some, made some adjustments uh, towards the end of the run and had I could take it. So, um, but yeah, uh, hopefully we don't get a penalty for being safe. I think we did. So, yeah, that's strange. <laughs> Kevin's just had a look at the time screen. Kevin, thank you, mate. Get, get yourself back to the paddock. Go and get some rest. And you're on a different tactics to all the other teams. Three, so we're looking forward to seeing what you can do in Q2, one, mate. Exactly. One minute. We'll be back. So Kevin there hinting at what they did, Jenny, which allowed Hedda to, to take the jump is they made an adjustment. That was what they were saying with P2. So they basically probably turned the torque down on the front uh, to, to, because there's only one wheel turning. So then they, they felt it was safer to take it. Kevin is feeling a bit disgruntled because he chose to miss the jump. Here it is, look, because they felt it wasn't safe. Now, by that, he means they don't want to damage the car anymore. So I get it. But the stewards have to look at it from just this is the black and white rule. You missed it. Here's a penalty. Yeah, they've only got five second penalty, though. So that's not too dear. It's not cost them hugely. So they've um, they've got a huge gap, admittedly. They they got around in 10 minutes and six seconds, 8.86. The fastest lap time at the moment, an 8.49.216. So big difference. Yeah. Just, they were just 10 seconds off Genesis and Tretti 90. Weren't they both Timmy Hansen and Kevin Hansen in their respective teams having bad luck here in Chile? Round four of Extreme E 2022, the penultimate round. Are oh, we going to crown the champions here? RXR looking very much bob on for it, but X44 Vida Carbon. If anyone can stop them, these guys can. Up first, Christina Gutierrez. Now you would look to Christina to set a very rapid time out there, then hand over to Loeb, who would do the same again. They've not been quite up with the top qualifier records that they had in the first season of Extreme E, so they need to find a little something out there together. But look, you can just see Christina making good time out there, doing a good job around there. She feels comfortable in these surroundings and comfortable in that X44 car. Yeah, they won the qualifying, didn't they, at every round last year and then in the first round this year. Since then, they've been P2 and P3 in qualifying. Um, back on the pace, look, two hundredths of a second in it here between Gutierrez 
And pace setters, Rosberg, X Racing, Michaela Arlen, Kotlinski at the wheel for their first, and now they go faster. So they're half a second up. So this is uh, this is crucial for them. They want to out qualify them. More importantly, I think even than out qualifying them, Jenny, is that continental traction change. They must steal five points off RXR there and pile the pressure on. They've got to do it. This is where we expect them to use the hyperdrive. Certainly the team so far have used it on that uphill section. Will we see them do that on their second lap? You can hear, can't you, that the car wants the extra power on that steep climb, so you can understand why they're doing it. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, she's used her hyperdrive on the way out. That's interesting. So going into the Continental Traction Challenge, she's using it to give herself as much momentum as she can. She just falls down from there. Yeah, she used it on the exit. Yeah, Sorry, apologies. It was coming out yeah, of the Continental Traction Challenge. That's an interesting one. Well, it, but these, then, when we know yesterday that Utah flew that jump too far and then put the car on the nose, I don't know, maybe they feel there's more to be gained there. I personally think there's more to be gained on the run up, but they've got to try it. And, and you know, maybe Gutierrez will do one thing and Sebastian Loeb will do the other, and, and they'll take the data from both and go, right, next session, this is what you do. The problem with the next session or any other session is you don't know where you'll be in traffic. This is the one time you're in complete control of when you can use the Inoa Hyperdrive and where you are on the track. Every other session, you've got other cars out there with you. Yeah, very clean out there at the moment, isn't it, compared to a race scenario, which we'll see later. So coming around the slingshot, that lovely banked approach that you can really get some speed into. And Christina giving it a roll, currently in second spot, but just a fraction, as you can see, off and doing a good job out there. Not so committed through that right-hander, just loses a half a second up over the crest now. Up onto Ridgeline. This is the straight we were talking about trying to carry the momentum onto. Look how long it is. Now, I can anticipate hyperdrive down here for the purposes of passing. It's not going to get you necessarily a better lap time, but I think we can look to see people maybe using it there during a race scenario if they feel like they might be able to get past. It's a little bit rough offline, but there is a wide expanse of, of choice of lines. Also worth remembering when you were talking about the traction challenge that it is the um, best time of both of yeah. the drivers. So Christina has got to go out there and she's got to support Loeb and they've both got to post that decent time. And when it comes to the gap between the leaders, OK, RXR are out in front on 75, but Chip Ganassi, 32 points behind them. Carlos Sainz and Axiona Sainz with Leia Sainz. Oh, a bit of over rotation there. 33 points behind an X44. This car that you're watching now with Gutierrez, 34 points behind RXR. So when you talk about stealing points away from our championship leaders, they know their task. Jenny Gow like an Apache pilot there with one eye on the stats and one eye on the screen <laughs> at the same time. I'm, I'm very impressed, I really am. I think um, it was half an eye. <laughs> it's, it's tough, mate. That was, that was a good save. Uh, like Gutierrez, uh, into, uh, into the switch zone now comes Gutierrez. One little sideways moment. That one corner where she just looked like she'd lifted a little bit, not a lot in it, comes in 5.2 down. So it was bang on it on the first lap. They lost a little bit of time on that second lap. We know that Loeb is, is mega, but also Christofferson is the champion and uh, has, has been bang on it all year. Loeb will have to do something very special to, to take those five seconds back, but it, he could. Really keen to see the position of the car because they've been doing something different down at X44. So they park quite close to the rear barrier. If you can see, they just dick in, duck in, and then get going. Yeah, keeping it as close to the back allows you to get on the gas that little bit earlier. Sometimes they use the handbrake, don't they, and just point it out uh, towards the course so that you can just get away straight. On board with low, they lengthen those harnesses. The little red tags on the harnesses allow you to pull up on the harness and release it, and then you've actually got the, the bungee cords which pull them away. And the, uh, the yellow ones there are to help pull down and plug into the lap belt. There you go. Very day aren't they? Yeah, look how colour-coded as well the harnesses are down at the bottom there, just to make sure you're plugging the right one into the right area. It's Lewis Hamilton's cap colour. There you go. It's your glass colour as well. Yeah, there you go. Radical. Yeah. One. Right, Gutierrez out then. Loeb in right at the back of that bay. Gives himself the run out, 30 kilometres an hour. Where will he use his hyperdrive? That's the question. Slightly, um, slightly slow release, I felt, just from the moment they said go, but um, Loeb is out, Gutierrez has done a good job, and uh, I think we're going to be able to hear from her now on how that first couple of laps went. Christina, you were bang on the pace that Michaela set earlier on in that first lap. A sideways moment, though, you just saved it. Uh, talk me through that run. Yeah, I made a little mistake in the second lap. I lose a little bit of time, but uh, I'm happy with the first lap. I don't know exactly the time, but I'm happy because now the track is a little bit slippery and with more points. But uh, still OK. We, we need to see Seb, how he's going, and, and we'll see. Pace is there, though. Thanks very much. Good luck. 
Well, good luck. Yes, that's what they'll need. They need everything at this moment to go out there and try and wrestle back that time. So we can do a direct comparison, uh, which is the exciting thing between Christopherson oh. and Loeb. That was lovely. It was. That's, that's hard on the car. We've not seen anyone launch it off there. You either go down with just a little bit of throttle and keep the car on the ground, or you take a slightly wider line and sweep diagonally down the bank. But Loeb's just gone, no, I'm just going to chuck it straight off the top there. So nicely done off bridge line. This is very committed, but so far not really digging into that five, six seconds lead I think this goes in hand in hand with the mentality of just give it everything and you can't do too much damage to the cars okay we, we saw the drive pro drive problem that they had in the JBXC car but that didn't seem to be because of the course it didn't seem to have broken it just gave up the ghost but we shall see hyperdrive He's same place as Gutierrez so X44 think that you can use it there and they reckon then they're carrying the speed down it's four second duration it might be then that when they land off the jump there's still a little bit of duration left at that pace and at the minute 34.4 Loeb has just gone quickest on sector three, so have they discovered that using it up the hill isn't as quick as using it down? He's got a tenth of a second quicker than Kyle LeDuc, who was the quickest in that sector, but it's both the drivers together. Gutierrez using it in the same place. Have they stuck themselves up at the top of those uh, times for the Continental Treasure Challenge? Really interesting. We've seen both Loeb and Gutierrez using these um, sessions as learning sessions. They're canny, they're wily, and they go out there and they try and do whatever they can to get the fastest time round. And you Usually it's incredibly successful. Look at the high line round the slingshot. Loeb takes utterly brilliant. Great rear shot there on board from Loeb looking up at our drone. I can tell you a number of the drones will get shot down by rocks this weekend, which is always <laughs> a bit gutting for the drone pilots. The worst thing is if you can't recover the drone before the next car comes round, then it's uh, then it's even worse. Yeah, Crunch losing, time. Yeah, losing a blade is fine. Losing the whole drone underneath an Odyssey 21 is suboptimal. He is now gaining 4.8, but it's only around a second. Going to have to try really hard because he had the hyperdrive on the last lap, though I know it doesn't make much difference to the actual gap but it was a tenth of a second quicker in that sector. Just catching all the time, as you can see. Where is this going to leave them? That's the question. Where will they slot into? Really decent times being posted by Loeb out there. He loves this course. You can really feel it. There's your uh, data up the uh, up the hill. You can see full throttle, just a dab of the brake again. You'll see a little bit of left foot brake. It just rotates the car nicely as our drone pilot returns to base. We cut down the scene and come down towards Copper Corner. That's after this section of the Continental Traction Change. That's interesting. Took the jump way slower and nosed it down earlier. Got back on the throttle earlier, but he flew that completely differently to the previous lap, where they used hyperdrive there. Interesting. Traction, traction Challenger a second off Rosberg X Racing at the moment. They'll need to find some improvement as they come round, jump the finish, a little bit heavy on the front right, lands the car, puts on the brakes. They slot into second position, five and a half seconds down on Rosberg X Racing. Yeah, they're 4.2 up on GMC Hummer EV, Chip Ganassi Racing. So Loeb, we think, looking at the, our sector times change, unfortunately, on our screen, and we lose the first sector round. But I think Loeb was fastest in sector three on his first lap by around a tenth. He had 34.4. Everyone is 34.5 that we can see, but we can only see their second lap sectors, unfortunately, on our timing screen. So if that's the case, then Gutierrez needs to find around a second, Jenny, in that same sector for them to be able to challenge for those five points. At the minute, the five points are going the way of Arlen Kotlinski and Christofferson. And that is not what uh, the other teams need. He rolls past the Fox tent there and past the various different tents of the other teams. Loosens off the harnesses. Fascinating. Very studious, isn't he, with his uh, glasses on there, full focus. So this is going over the ridge and then cutting back down the replay you can just see that cutting up as you go into that section and the flying Oof. bash that's quite an impact it really was that that is definitely risking it for me but it, it's an alternate line jenny it's maybe one that you could take during the racing to try and line somebody up in front you're going to ride on board now for that same section so up onto the ridge line look close in on this flag then watch he lifts off the throttle to bring the nose in and then guns it and literally look there's a dip on the inside that launches it off boom okay well it worked they didn't break the car 
but is it is it risk risk versus reward they might look at the data and go you know what we didn't gain any time don't do it again because it's it's risking the car they might look at it and go it was two tenths it's worth it all day long yeah they'll see all the data points that we don't unfortunately get to see and yeah. they'll be able to work it out and exactly what they want to do but look at that arid dry desert as we get ready for our next car not long to go now until Veloce Racing takes the track. Well, Veloce waiting uh, patiently to take their turn. Uh, we're going to have a catch up with Michaela Arlen Kotlinski. Well, as things stand, Rosberg's X Racing still quickest and leaders in the traction challenge as well. And Michaela Arlen Kotlinski joins me now. You guys are flying out there. What have you managed to unlock? Uh, I think we, we did a, a solid run and we tried to make no mistakes, so I felt for myself. I went as quick as I could without making any mistakes because as you can see here, it is so tight. So if you have a minor mistake, you lose two seconds and then, then the lead is gone. So um, yeah, we will see. It will be exciting now to see uh, Akiona signs. I mean, they were super quick in the free practices. Um, so yeah, for sure it's going to be tight, but um, yeah, we had a good run. We feel good with the pace and so on. And uh, thinking in the long run, wow. we want to take as many points as possible this weekend. Yeah, points is where it counts, and you guys are winning everything you can win at the moment. Laia Sanz was the quickest female yesterday. Christina on that first lap was matching you to the millisecond. It is going to be tight up there, isn't it? Yeah, and I mean, we also saw now, you never know who's going to start, but it uh, looks like it's going to be all females and then uh, Kevin, uh, but the rest is going to be <laughs> almost like it was in Sardinia. Uh, but, you know, in the end, I just tried to find my best pace, and but, like I said, also be on the safe side. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. Laura Witts down there. Laura Winter, even, down there. Laura Witts, different presenter. I think Laura Winter might have found her suitcase. Uh, she wore a different outfit yesterday. If you, were, if you don't follow Laura on social media, the, the big story is her case didn't make it all the way to Chile. Um, so, yes, there we go. Poor old Laura. Poor old suitcase. Yeah, will it ever be seen again? So that was the moment for Gutierrez. That was actually, that's a couple of seconds, and that's in the traction challenge. But, of course, she did have two... Was that the lap on which she used the hyperdrive? Because if it was, then then maybe, maybe, maybe they could go quickest. It, I can't remember, Jenny, if, if she had the moment on the lap she used the hyperdrive. I think she did. I was too busy looking at the stats. And yeah, whenever I look at the standings, off one way, one eye off the we other. know what happens. Something yeah. funky goes on. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Mad eye gal. <laughs> Mad eye gal looking at the various different bits. Fantastic stuff, though, to see them challenging and getting right up there. There's 10 seconds over the top four at the minute. It's Christofsson Arlen Kotlinski for Rosberg X Racing from Logan Gutierrez for X44 Vita Carbon. The Duke and Price for GMC EV Hummer Chip Ganassi Racing. And then Tanner Faust and Emma Gilmore for Neon McLaren Extreme E. To be fair, Jenny, there's only... 20 seconds down to a P6. So the top six are split by 20. It's close. You can just see there in the paddock, the XC Eco icon, icons showing you all the different things that we're trying to do, including everybody bringing their own bowl and saving 250,000 individual items going to landfill. A lot being done down there to try and help the environment. Two cars to go here in Q1 in Chile, round four of Extreme E 2022. Down on the line is Veloce Racing. After that will be Acciona Sites, who were fastest yesterday in both of the free practice sessions. So can they take the top spot, which is currently held by Rosberg X Racing? Christine GZ taking the car first, and it'll be fascinating to see how she's doing that big crash. Seemed to be something that did affect her last time out. We hope it won't affect her too much this time out, and we hope that she can just stay focused. She seems fit. I've seen images of her on her social media jumping up staircases. She looks happy and healthy. Yeah, she's 15 seconds off taking the start. Uh, we have on the line from Chile, Tamara Molinaro, who we're going to have a chat with in just a moment. Let's get Christine GZ off the line first of all and away. So the run starts for Veloce Racing. Four laps, two laps for Christine GZ, two laps for her teammate Lance Woolridge, the South African who's uh, renowned for his off-road racing experience and was maximum attack when he made his debut last year in the UK. And we, we, you know, we're expecting great lap times from him. GZ hopefully is feeling a little more recovered, as Jenny said, from that injury earlier this year. Now, Tamara Molinaro, you are out this weekend again with Timo Scheider for Excite Energy Racing. How was your run in Q1? 
hi everybody. Uh, so yeah, I mean our run was uh, was okay. Uh, we didn't want to take any risks. Uh, you know, yesterday we already had uh, we already had our problems, let's say. <laughs> so we decided to you know just take it easy uh, and yeah, see what happens to to the other ones. Yeah, you were down on runtime yesterday, weren't you? But um, I feel adrenaline is on your side, if nothing else, this weekend, Tamara. Tell us about your tattoos. <laughs> well, it's healing at the moment, so <laughs> everything uh, everything is good. And uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, no, we had uh, we had this idea about doing this tattoo together after uh, our podium uh, in uh, in Sardinia. So yeah, I have it on my rib cage, and Timo has it on his foot. Which is more painful, foot or rib cage? I reckon rib cage. Uh, I have to be completely honest. I didn't feel that much pain. Uh, yes. I was actually expecting to to be in a lot of pain, but it wasn't too bad. Uh, so yeah, probably Timo's uh, place was actually much uh, worse than mine. So Tamara, what's uh, what's the score with the track conditions? We saw it was damp at the start of the session. We know they're damping the track down with seawater. What, what's your feelings on the way it's developing during the session, and how do you think the track's going to develop through the course of the of the weekend? Uh, to be honest, I mean we've seen yesterday uh, that there is actually a lot of difference between going uh, first on the road and uh, and last, for example. Uh, so for sure, the the track is getting better. Um, but yeah, I mean, it is what it is. So you just have to deal with the cards that, uh, that have been dealt to you. So uh, yeah, that's how it is. Fascinating that you see that it's getting better and better then. So what do you expect from this afternoon when we go cars racing for qualifying two? Uh, well, so Timo will take the start uh, locally because <laughs> I mean uh, I'm not used to fight with five cars uh, for for the first corner, so that's the strategy that we decided uh, to you know to do this weekend. Uh, and yeah, I mean let's see. Hopefully we will get a good start, and uh, then you know you never know what happens in Extreme E, so it will be interesting. So Christine GZ is on her second lap at the minute. She's around 11 seconds down. That would see them slot in. Uh, if you look at, uh, well, we're looking at our timing screens in between Neon, uh, McLaren, Extreme, and Excite Energy Racing. So at the moment they'd be just ahead. But if she loses the same amount of time on this lap, then they'll drop behind Tamara Molinaro, who we're talking to now, and her teammate Timo Scheider. So good to see uh, GZ back out there and at it. I'm expecting Woolridge will go maximum attack Jenny on his two laps as well. Yeah, see, so Tamara, you can see the same images that we can. Just talk us through some of this course. Tell us what are the what are the bits that Christine GZ is negotiating right now. What's she having to put up with in the car? Well, so this uh, this steep hill is actually uh, you know uh, a challenging place because uh, you know it's it's very very steep uh, and then there is this jump and you have to be very tight on this left flag uh, to be sure not to miss this narrow gate here, uh, which I did yesterday twice in uh, free practice, uh, <laughs> so I know very well the place. Then uh, here, of course, it's uh, it's the jump where we saw uh, the, the the crash of Utah, so there we also need to be very. Uh, very careful because uh, you know we can you can just lose it there you know you can lose a, a few a few tenths of a second but uh, you can just you know uh, end the, the race and for sure that's not what we what we want so uh, actually now the the switch zone uh, it's actually very tricky to see exactly the boards because there is a, a, a crest just before it uh, so you know it's not easy to find a good breaking point for it yesterday I speed to go into the the switch so let's say that yesterday we had a, a bit of a rough day and today we just wanted to have a, a clean one interesting thank you for that that's the sort of thing we just can't see from here so it's great to, to hear your uh, insight on where those boards are we're going to see the switch. Tomorrow, I just wanted to ask you one more thing, which, which was about Inoa Hyperdrive. So most of the teams we've seen using on the uphill section to try and gain some momentum there. But we noticed the X44 were using it on the crest and the run down to Utah's jump. What, what's your thoughts on, on where it works and, and X44's different tactics? Do you think other people might try that? Well, for sure, uh, it, it's actually a good place for, for Hyperdrive, what X44 did. Um, I, I probably have, well, of course, I don't know because we have to analyze a lot of things. But I think that on the uphill, I think you can uh, you can carry a bit more uh, a bit more speed. Uh, for sure, the uh, the good thing about doing it before the jump is also the the way that then the um, the car absorbs the the jump as well. Uh, so yeah, it's it's interesting. Uh, we decided to take it on the start because uh, you know of our conditions on the on the road. Uh, we thought that I could make more time on the on the first sector than. Uh, then you know in the 
in the traction uh, challenge because uh, for sure this week uh, this afternoon is going to be more uh, more fast so we that's how we decided to do it so tomorrow we're just going to have a quick chat with christine gz as we see lance woolridge uses hyperdrive christine gz is down in the switch zone with laura winter let's see how that lap uh, went for her Christine, last time out in Sardinia, obviously you were still recovering from that foot. You were gaining confidence in the car. How did it feel out there for you today? Uh, pretty sketchy. <laughs> it's very, very fast. Obviously, it's completely different to what we drive off road, but it's it's pretty cool. And I mean, hopefully, we're going to step it up during during the weekend. We're trying to also keep the car in one piece, which right now is the main objective, let's say. We saw you jump out the car. I'm sure you'd have run to the command centre if I hadn't stopped you. The foot is feeling good, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's great. Now you'll watch me run off. I'll let you run then. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, Christine GZ, I think they're just saying it's very quick. I'm trying to keep the car in one piece. She's got to find that confidence, Jenny. She's just got to find the ability to push like she was before and, and, and block out those feelings of having a big crash earlier in the year and all the rest of it. It is way easier said than done. Woolridge coming down the hill. Has he got a problem? That that didn't look, didn't look good at all coming down the hill. All crossed up and then tight on the inside. Okay. Interesting, just watching him come down, as you say. Don't, I can't see the throttle reading, so it's hard to know if he's absolutely full throttle. He's but, catching, so yeah. Yeah, but it seems it's OK, but it was a strange line, wasn't it? It hasn't used his hyperdrive... Oh, sorry, did use his hyperdrive on the exit just before we spoke to Christine GZ. So he's used it up there. 20 seconds back, he's going to see them. They're around the... Wow, it's actually... No, I was going to say it's very close. It's very close with that Cupra. And then Genesis Andretti were 21 seconds back, but they also got that 43 second penalty for Timmy Hansen speeding on the exit of the switch zone. So uh, it, they're either going to slot in, I think they're going to slot in in sixth place, aren't they? Here, seventh place potentially, sixth or seventh place. Yeah, disappointing for GZ and um, Woolridge as well. They had bad luck last time out. The points that they've got seven so far for the season, once again, another of those teams that just they seem to go well but then just don't get the points from the weekend that maybe they deserve yeah agreed you've just got to, everything's got to go so well hasn't it? you've got to get everything together so well through the whole course of the weekend it's all got to go your way i mean jeezy before she had her accident was absolutely flying she was the fastest person out on track so she's just got to remember and refine that form as you it's say hard. it's really, really hard. easy easy to say that from a commentary box when you're not actually in the car or having to do anything with the car um, and it's a committed course, it's fast, Jenny. You know, so they, there's lots of crests where the car's unsettled. Um, one last question to Tamara before we let you head back to the paddock. Um, we, you're heading out next, obviously, for the race portion. Your, your background is largely as a rally driver, but we're getting used to seeing you out here racing as well. What, what, what do you find harder, Q, Q1, where you're out on your own, doing what you're used to, or, or the racing section? Oh no, for sure. I I find harder to be to be racing. Uh, you know, okay, I had one year of uh, experience in rallycross, uh, but you know, I never did karting. I never did racing in my career. So for me, that's. Uh that's the part where I struggle the most. And uh, of course, being out on my own, it's more what uh, what I like. I just miss a co-driver, to be honest. Uh, even sometimes, uh, it's, uh, it's, hard. it's hard to be alone in the car and not hearing anyone talking to you. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I just have to get used to it. Well, you'll have to get Timo on the radio to give you some encouragement. Or maybe you can persuade him to sit in the passenger seat. But tomorrow, all the, all the best for you, the Excite Racing team, and, and to Timo as well. Uh, we look forward to seeing you in Q2 later on today. Good luck, all right, and thanks for joining us. Thanks a million, guys. Thanks so much. Oh, so good to hear her thoughts on this course as well. She's been out there already this morning. She'll go out again later as well. And as you can see, Veloce slotting into seventh place out there, 26 seconds behind the leaders. Now, Woolridge giving a bit of feedback over the radio. Well, what are his splits like? I'm just looking at Lance's splits. He's about a second off in the first one. He's thereabouts in the second one. A little way off in sector three. We don't have his times for both laps, only his second lap. So they're not, they're not a million miles away, are they? There's Christine GZ. She's looking uh, at the timing screen up in the command centre as well. She's looking... She looks like I want to go and give her a big yeah, hug and come say, on. come on, you got this. You've got this, yeah, you've got this. But we can't do that. Everyone's no. our favourite. We'll send her a message. <laughs> we'll send her a message. Yeah, chin up. I know it's tough for you. It's tough for the Loche team as well. One more car to go out there. It is the Axiona Science team getting ready to go. This is just a look back at that Veloce team in the car.
Tamara Molinaro saying that the conditions were improving, but it looked a little bogged down for Veloce. It was very dry on that section, the off-camber section down the bottom there. Very dry indeed. The sand almost looking deeper than it was. That was one of the bits we thought might cut up down here at the bottom of the hill. But a good, look, a good, it's a good solid run by both. There's no major problem there. They've brought the car home. That's one of the most important things in this championship. And when it gets later in the day and they can go out there and get a little bit racy, racy, I wonder if that just reignites that fire and you go, oh, yes, this is it. It does. And also, Jenny, the, the other thing is sometimes you just realise where there's a section where somebody's doing something else. You go out and free practice or in a, a solo run like this and, and you've only got you and the clock and you can look at the data and the team go, you need to do this, you need to do that. That's easily easier said than done. But when you follow... I don't know, Michaela Arlen Kotlinski over the crest, and you see just where she braked and just where she pitched in, you go, OK, you know what, actually, I can go quicker through there. And you get dragged along a little bit, and you can learn a little bit about pace. So uh, we'll, we'll see for those who aren't quite there. It's tight at the top, just 10 seconds across those top uh, four teams. Five-second gap between RXR an X44, but these guys were so fast yesterday. Yep, fastest in the first practice session, fastest in the second practice session. They will want to go out there and really try and impress everybody and show what they can do this weekend. These timings are on the board. They know exactly what they've got to beat. And 8.49.216 is the time that Rosberg X Racing have set. So that's what they're going to be looking for. And we are now under one minute until we get going for the last car in qualifying round. Round one. All eyes concentrated. Number 55 car ready and waiting to go. And I feel like this team have a lot to prove after last time getting kind of beaten out of the uh, Nerfed race. Off, Nerfed yeah. off. Yes, that's the appropriate word, isn't it? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, look, Carlos was a bit unhappy about that. Johan couldn't see him. You know, racing incident, not whatever you like. You know, the stewards got involved. First of all, it was a small penalty. Then it was a bigger penalty. But it's fine. You know, the, these things happen. Carlos is OK. That's the most important thing. It was a big old crash, a lot of work done to the car. They obviously got it dialed because yesterday, as we said, they were fastest in both sessions, not just one, both sessions. In fact, yesterday in FP2, eight of the 10 teams got a penalty for whacking a flag or doing something wrong. Tomorrow, she got caught for speeding yesterday. Um, which sounds hilarious, doesn't it really? Interesting. So straight away, hyperdrive for Lyra Sands off the line. Let's see what a difference it makes up to turn one. Nothing. 200 so, then other people have used half the drive off the start too. I don't remember if uh, if anybody else used it more effectively than that. But Yeah, Nasser Alatia used it, I think, and he was pretty good. But I think this is where it carries the speed into that into that slingshot, hopefully, for them. And then they can really get some momentum going. So fastest at the moment, getting into that P1. They've got to keep on pushing. You've got to go for it, Leia. You've got to try and get this car back two laps before handing over to Carlos Sainz. I'm impressed with Lyra Sands just the, the way the, the progression again we've we've said it a lot with with a lot of the drivers and you know you just have to raise your game don't you it's absolutely world class this field it's there are legendary drivers left right and center if you ever wander through the paddock um and lyra has massively raised her game she's fastest at the moment by eight hundredths of a second one of the only females with experience in chile so she understands yes. the nature of what she's doing here she's a dakar absolute pro remember when it comes to two wheels little different on four but she knows what she's doing out there and her confidence has just increased every time she's got in that car i think that's the thing jenny she's made the transition now from bike rider to car driver it, it, it she's in a different place last year we kept saying she's learning she's learning you, you continue to learn or you hope to continue to learn the whole way through your career all the little tricks that you can but a, a very different drive to before 0.42 up now it's not a lot 0.57 but it's going the right way the whole time liar sands is throwing down here for actually on she's got a whole nother lap to go but she's going to finish this first lap in the region of uh, half a second to a second quicker. Look, it's going up a tenth each sector. Is she going to carry the pace there? Squashes the jump just a little bit, but still 0.64 of a second up after her first circuit. Yeah, really interesting watching the section that they go through. Sector three, which is the Continental Traction Challenge. She's a couple of seconds off the fastest time. So let's see if she can improve on that and lap two, because I think most of the fastest times have been set on the second lap when it comes to that Continental Traction Challenge. Of course, remember, they're going from a standing start or the switch zone on their lap one and lap three so it's lap two and four that they can really go great guns carry all the speed round 
So I think Lyra is the first driver to be bang on the pace of Michaela Arlen Kotlinski. Sarah Price was really close, if you remember, on the first lap. Only had what, 2.2 in it. But Lyra's actually come in quicker. She's just about edging the championship leader. Three-time winner, one-time uh, DQ'd. That's the line that Timmy Hansen yesterday it's was wide. on, the super wide, yeah, and then had to lift. And it has cost her. It's cost her about eight-tenths of a second. That's nothing, though. That, that's that's keeping it within reach. Just all depends where you, you feel personally as a driver you want that speed, where you want to carry momentum, and how you best think that you can slingshot a way of doing that. Catching once again. You can see that gap just coming down as she comes down the hill towards this section where people have been using the hyperdrive just to give them that push up towards this fastest jump. So up over the top here, carry the speed. If you remember Christopherson over there on his second lap, Jenny, it was a big jump over the crest. But again, that was with the assistance, certainly on one of the laps of the hyperdrive, which gives you a bit more air, but then makes those that tricky S-bend coming down the hill difficult. Most people now take it to the left side. This morning, we were seeing people taking the jump on the right side, that driver approaching the jump, not the angle we're looking at. 1.91 seconds down. Carlos Sainz has a little stretch. The legend is about to get into the car. In comes Lyra Sands. Now, remember what Tamara Molinaro said, that the braking board, that the slow board is just after a crest, and it's really hard to judge. As she comes in, she loses just about eight tenths to Arlen Kotlinski. So she was 1.9 down, then 2.7. Most of that's in that braking zone into the switch zone. That braking zone is going to be fascinating with five cars yeah, as well. If they're, if they're clumped together, that's going to be really tricky to navigate. Right. Let's have a little listen. They'll go into their bay, which is the very last bay. It all shuffles out, of course. They'll do the same distance, but I wonder how much of an advantage they'll think that is to get back out and racing as quickly as possible. So, Lyre Sounds parks the car. They wait until the car's into neutral. Only then can Carlos Sainz go out. They don't like the switch much. Let's see if they've got any more, uh, any more keen on the idea. Nice switch, actually. Carlos dives in. They don't take the wheel off. Remember, Chip Ganassi Racing always take the wheel off. They've chosen not to. It's just one more thing on the job list, isn't it? Laya Sands has come around this side. Extending the belts. Clips in the radio comms uh, lead, which we saw hadn't happened earlier on for JBXE. They're struggling with the belts. They're struggling with the belts. The, the left shoulder belt isn't on at all. Oh, it's caught behind him. Loosens it off, shuts the door. They might just about scrape this inside the 45. Got to get that door done and down. He can't go. Oh, he's gone no, too soon. No, don't go. Oof. Got to wait. Okay, you, you had spotted it as well, Jenny. The, the, the technician was still in the switch zone. They have to be in neutral yeah. until the technician has left the switch zone, and then can they put it into drive and move forward. If he moved forward too soon, which I think he might have done, the stewards will have to have a look at that. So, hyperdrive straight off. So, they both used it off the start then. It's Lyra Sands. Plus a minute 29, it can't be, surely. That's no, we'll wait for an update on that. There right, we we're going to catch up with Elias Sand. She's with Laura Winter and we'll fix the timing. Laya, still breathing hard from what was a brilliant lap from you, but then an issue in the switch zone. The technician was still in in there when Carlos went to go. Just talk us through what happened from your point of view. I don't know, we were struggling to, to put the, the bells on the correct way, but we will see what happened and Happy for the performance, we will see, and still, this is still a long weekend, so let's let's push. It was a brilliant, brilliant lap from you. You seem to lose a bit of time in the second half of the second lap. What did you learn out there in terms of where time can be won and lost? Yeah, the track is changing and it's uh, getting more bumpy. Uh, I did a small mistake that cost me a, a bit of time, but anyway, I'm, I'm happy. Yeah, no big mistake, so that's the, the goal. It was a great lap, thank, thank you. you. Carlos Sainz has just hit the flag on the top of that crest, Jenny. It was already lying down, but we did see some super strong winds here, which actually made the flags look horizontal, but I think he drove over it. But either way, car 55 under investigation, switch zone infringement. You saw the replay whilst Laya Sands was talking to Laura Winter. Unfortunately, Carlos moved the car with the technician still in the switch bay, and then the timing screen updated to show that they were nine seconds back. So then not only did they lose time, but going early, that'll be a whacking great penalty, I'm afraid. Yep, not the weekend that they wanted at the moment. They're going to have some serious work to do in the race section of qualifying, which gets underway slightly later on today. But let's see what form Carlos is in, because he looks like he's absolutely...
absolutely wringing the neck of this Odyssey 21, and it looks great. Oh, well, you can't beat watching Carlos on a charge. I mean, you know, and, and Carlos, angry Carlos after uh, the switch zone didn't go the right way, and it has to come out and race later on. Yes, please, is all I'm going to say. It's, we know they've got the pace. That's what's so exciting for me, really, is to see. I think we've got four or five teams here, Jenny, that have all got the pace. RX, RX 44, CGR, Chip Ganassi Racing, and McLaren, and actually on the side. So uh, those, for me, are the five teams that have all got the pace. Just little things here and there. Maybe even Genesee Andretti uh, United without the problem that Katie had had. So, yeah. Yeah, it's, and because the course is so short, this time out, it does make those those differences yes, just much smaller. so much yeah. smaller. Yeah. I mean, look, on it, about Nasser Alatir as well, um, and his new teammate, Clara Anderson. Clara's had no time in the car. What will she do when they get stuck into a race situation? This one's going to be tight. Don't miss Q2 today. It's going to be fantastic. You're taking a look here. That's the summit where they drop off uh, for the start of the Continental Traction Challenge. That whole yellow sector there before they reach the uh, the end boards, which we know are down by the jump, which uh, caused the problems yesterday. So this part of the course is in there, and I think this is really challenging. You've got an off camber corner before it, then you've got the dip. Then look at the camber going away from you. If you're too far to the right, it'll pull you off to the side of the road, over the crest, and then down towards the the finish of that section. It, it's actually it's probably the most technical part of the course. Yep, lots there to trip you up, but King Carlos is one of those with the most amount of experience. I'm just waiting for the Sector 3 time, the Continental Traction Challenge time to pop up on our screens. It's a 36.7, so not too dazzling at the moment, and a 15-second time penalty for Car 55 for that switch zone infringement. It's going to shuffle them down the order. Well, they're plus 17 already. With a plus 15, it could see them down as low as 7th or 8th, Jenny. So it's, a, it's an absolute disaster, to be quite frank about it. Nine seconds we know were lost in that switch zone. And they go, OK, they go 6, so, but no, that's no, without the penalty. Then. That's without the penalty. So plus 15 is going to see them, what, uh, 27, 32. Further down by quite I some considerable nine, way. Uh, eight. So I think they'll go 8th. I think they'll go 8th. That's the session done. Q1 goes to Rosberg X Racing. Not only have they won the session, they currently lead the Continental Traction Challenge, which would give them five bonus points. Can anybody stop them? That's the question, and that's what all of these drivers will be thinking to themselves. How do we stop them? They said no allegiances have been made yet, but maybe an alliance for the future is what is needed here. Maybe there's something that the drivers can do to just stop the might that is Rosberg X Racing. Fastest sector times have just flashed up here for us. Christophson sector four, Loeb sector two and three. Three is the continental traction change, 34-4, but remember it's him and his teammate, Christina Gutierrez. They were around a second off the pace in there, so Christina just needs to find a bit, but remember she had that big sideways moment in there. Bet on X44 going for that in the next session, but they've got to deal with the traffic as well. First sector, sector one, Carlos Sainz is the quickest in there, so nice spot of fastest sector times that would give us our perfect lap but uh, our laps are all a bit different here in extreme e, thanks to the conditions and switch zones and so on two brothers having problems out there their teams the genesis andretti united team and jbxc both cars unable to set really a representative time they both had technical issues they will come back stronger as well in the next round so they could be in the mix of the teams yesterday, Acciona Science Jenny fastest in both free practice sessions, and here they're slowest of the cars who didn't have any issues. But of course, the issue was was down to the switch zone, not the car. So um, some work to do there. Can't count them out. They also lost a lot of time on that second run regardless. And I just wonder if you Fluster. make a mistake like that in yeah. the switch zone, it kind of trickles over into your running as well, potentially. 17 seconds, it's a, it's a big gap. Yeah, it is. It was, uh, what was it when Lyre came in? It was about 10, wasn't it, when Lyre? Nine or 10, remember. it was, yeah, it was, it was slim. 10, yeah. yeah, but it was... Um, Not quite no, it in the form no, of yesterday. No, it wasn't. Was she, she only came, two seconds She came in two seconds off, because we said it was the closest it had been. So Lyre Sands came in super close, but they lost nine seconds, Jenny, in the switch zone. Yeah, so while they that gap of 17, take the nine off it, and suddenly they're only eight seconds off, and it puts them P3. It would have put them in between X44 V Vida, Vida Carbon and GMC Hummer EV Chip Ganassi Racing. So they would have been right up there. They lost nine seconds in the switch zone, and then they got the penalty, which means they're not here with the top three. But look at that, a formidable trio as well, and those are the ones battling for the championship rxr 
the next 44. Then the Chip Ganassi Racing Team. They are all separated by just a fraction of a team away from 32 points from our leaders. RXR, is this going to be their second championship winning weekend? That is the question, and we'll find out the answer over the course of the next two days. It was a mud bath, wasn't it, uh, when they won in the UK, if you remember? Johan oh, Christophson wow, yeah. wrestled Molly Taylor to the ground. And then uh, Nico Rosberg as well, wasn't it? Everybody covered in mud. Uh, yeah. It's uh, not going to be like that here. No, it's not. It's, uh, well, not unless they take a big, long run over to the Salt Flats over in the background there. So plenty more action to come from here in Chile. Well, there is the paddock. Down there is uh, Laura Winter. She's caught up with Sebastian Loeb. He's fastest on his own in that uh, Continental Traction Challenge area. Well, taking a look at the times, X44 Vida Carbon Racing are well up there, challenging RXR and Sebastian Loeb with the fastest lap as well, pipping Johan Christofferson. How was it out there? Uh, it was good. Uh, Christina, uh, Christina also was really fast. He, she was matching the time of Michaela and she did a mistake in one of the last corners. She lost uh, a few seconds there. So we were five seconds behind when I started the lap and yeah, I did the two best laps, but for, for quite a, a few tenths. So uh, it was impossible to to pass in, in front, but uh, we are second of the quality and uh, that's not uh, bad. It's a good start for the weekend. Next up, of course, we've got side-by-side -side racing. We've got five car races. Uh, what's it going to be like door to door on this course? This is difficult to say. I think it's a, a track where, where it can be some overtaking. Uh, it's quite wide with different possibility of lines. So I think it could be interesting. It's always a bit more complicated because it's uh, you cannot have everything under control when you are fighting with the other guys. So I just hope we can go through and have a good run and, and go to the semi-final. We'll see. Good luck. Thanks, Seb. Good to see them. Right, and good to hear from Sebastian Loeb as ever. Oh, it's going to be so good this afternoon. I cannot wait to see these five car battles go out there. You can see work going on on the cars already. In fact, quite a lot of work going on in the Excite Energy car. That is the end of Q1 then. Top of the time sheets. Arlen Kotlinski and Christopherson, 849.2. P2 Gutierrez and Loeb, P3 Price and Leduc. Sands and Sainz could have been up there if it wasn't for that little issue in the switch zone, which cost them some time. And then, of course, the penalty for leaving early. It's Gilmore, Faust, Molinaro, Scheider, Anderson, Alatia, all to play for. Points down the right-hand side. They get points from this Q1 session, and they'll get points from Q2 later on today when we go racing. Worth saying those points are just the intermediate points, so they don't get added onto anyone's grand total when it comes to the... I suppose the standings, but it is fundamental to where you begin your races when it comes to the semi-finals. You desperately want to stay out of the bottom four. You do not want to be in the crazy race because only one car goes through from them. Yeah, so all to play for. Got to try and win those races. They're going to be going maximum attack, full guns blazing, basically, to try and stop these two. Rosberg X Racing, Johan Christofsson and Michaela Arling Kotlinski leading the championship, leading the Continental Traction Challenge. Doing a very good job so far, but can anybody beat them in the racing portion and maybe knock them down, make the job a little bit harder tomorrow? Well, it's a stunning setting, isn't it? You can just see there the Antofagasta mine. They're trying very hard to make this more sustainable, and we all have to do our bits. The QR code in the corner is to do with grid play. If you want to get involved, you certainly can do, because everybody's votes are going to make a big impact on where people start this race, their pick for the grid. Well, actually, on the sites, they can ride up at the top of that. Apt Cooper there as well. Apt Cooper have always had good votes this year. Last year, it was always X44 and RXR who were at the top of the standings. I think there's a few F1 fans out there who like to vote in favour of their old favourite drivers. Uh, but at the minute, Acciona Science with the advantage. They've got a bit of work to do in Q2 to make advantage of that. In the build-up to the final at each Extreme E X Prix, fans can show their support and vote for their favourite teams and drivers through grid play, with voting taking place via the Extreme E website. The team that collects the most votes win grid play and gets first grid position picked 
final and have an opportunity to massively influence the start of the race. But there is a twist. The teams that do not reach the final can donate their votes to any other team. The winners of the crazy race unable to receive any additional votes. With a strong start being key to a good x result in Extreme E, grid play can make or break a team's chances of success. Which team will emerge as firm fan favourites? Nice recap there. Thank you very much, Andrew Coley. So, 10 teams have gone out there. They've done their best around the harsh terrain that is the Antofagasta Copper X Pre track. And my word, it's taken some, hasn't it? It has. We've seen a couple of people with issues. We've seen a number of different tactics for the Anoa Hyperdrive. And I think there are other places, Jenny, we might see that be. Uh, unleashed in, in the attempt to try and make some passes. One car around here has been exciting. Five cars around here is going to be absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I can't wait. Make sure you come back and join us. The qualifying heats, you can see who's going to be going against each other. And they look like an absolutely brilliant combo. Qualifying rounds two, group one and group two. Plenty to get excited about there. Yeah, neither of those is looking like a particularly easy race, is it? Those points will be added up to the ones from Q1, and that will put them into the semi-finals and, of course, the crazy race tomorrow. It's been a brilliant Q1 here in Chile for round four of Extreme. Make sure you join us later on today when we go racing and round out quali. Thank you.